Life Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida, site of the 82nd Capital One Orange Bowl on a sun-drenched New Year's Eve afternoon where the college football playoff is ready to roll. This backyard dream of a journey began years ago on county roads and quiet streets. Traveling the long road and enduring each struggle, even to arrive at the start of this season. These four teams are the survivors, and still, they roll on. Oh, you've been on a fast train, and it's going on the rail. And you start breaking down in the cold rain. Florida, the 82nd Capital One Orange Bowl just about set to begin. And our matchup this afternoon in our college football semifinal playoff. The Big 12 champions from Norman, Oklahoma, the Sooners against the only undefeated team still remaining, the Atlantic Coast Conference champion Clemson Tigers. Baker Mayfield, a sensational, magical season for the number two All-American quarterback against the first team All-American quarterback in Deshaun Watson. Just two of the stars that we'll see this afternoon. Welcome, everybody. Brad Nussler along with Todd Blackledge. Beautiful day, sunny, about 84 degrees. As you know, the college football season sort of starts with recruiting. It works yep. its way through spring ball, gets to August for fall camp. That's where we jump on board. Yep. And now here we are to end 2015, partner, and we've got the best afternoon and evening the college football season has to offer. Yeah, we really do. We've got four very deserving teams fighting it out today in the game over in North Texas. Later on tonight, it sizes up as a, a typical old-fashioned slugfest between two teams, Michigan State and Alabama, that pride themselves on playing rugged defense. Here in the Capital One Orange Bowl, a firework display. Two explosive offenses led by the two All-American quarterbacks should be fun. This time a year ago, Oklahoma ended 8-5. and five. Bob Stoops retooled, and here yeah. they are, one of the best teams in the country since that inexplicable loss to Texas. When you sit in the main chair, you got to make tough decisions, and Bob Stoops let a couple loyal assistants go, brought in a young new offensive coordinator, switched a few other things around, and it's made all the difference. And, of course, Dabo Sweeney is the coach of the year in college football. Kickoff from Miami's coming up. But first, a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy and the college football playoff. What a scene. 
making their sixth appearance in the Orange Bowl. They're the nation's only undefeated team at 13 and 0. They are the Atlantic Coast Conference champions, looking for a shot at their first national title since 1981. Dabo Sweeney and the number one ranked team in the country, led by the first team All-American quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Here come the Clemson Tigers. You can start to feel the juices flow, folks. It's getting close. It is almost time. Yeah! The building is revving, lurching, wild and limitless. Nothing matters now but ending the wait. It's New Year's Eve. It's party time. It's cave time. has been the Nissan pregame rush down on the field at Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, you have had a way of finding just the right words to say to your team in big games, a theme or a message. What was it that you left with them in the locker room before they ran out onto the field? <laughs> Let's finish 2015. It's been a great year. You know, there's no hope for a better yesterday. It's all about today, these four quarters, and just go out and let's play loose and try to play our best four quarters of the year. What is the balance you want to strike with Deshaun Watson throwing the long, deep ball that he's good at and the running game? Well, we got, you know, we always want balance in what we do, but a lot of that determines on how they play us. So, you know, we got to get into the flow of the game and see how what their plan is, how they're going to try to attack us and so we can counter that. Your defense has a challenge. They like to go fast. They have a quarterback that can scrabble, too. What's the biggest challenge you see with that? Well, you know, his ability to create and extend plays. I mean, we've got to do a great job. First of all, we've got to stop the run. You know, we can't allow them to have balance. We've got to stop the run. That's critical. And then and then we got to try to contain him in the pocket. And we got to tackle him. He's a hard guy to tackle. Uh, so, you know, easier said than done. It's going to be a heck of a ball game. Have a good one, Coach. Okay. Brad? All right, Holly, welcome back into the booth, everybody. We're going to talk about those guys, too. It's just not every day or no. night that you get two quarterbacks of this caliber on the same field, Todd. Yeah, and let's talk about their similarities first. When you talk about Baker Mayfield and Deshaun Watson, they're similar in their size and stature and their productivity and efficiency when it comes to throwing the football. They have been outstanding this year, both hovering right around 70% completion, excellent decision makers, well over 3,000 yards, both accounting for a lot of touchdowns and they're both dual threat guys that can hurt you with their feet as well as their arm and we saw the magic of baker mayfield starting week two in knoxville tennessee yeah. and that magic is carried on through the season yeah and this is where the difference comes a little bit in them when you talk about how they hurt you running the football with baker mayfield he's an innovator a creator not a lot of design runs for him but a lot of big plays when he's forced out of the pocket and he can create he does an excellent job of staying alive and extending plays and then keeping his eyes downfield at all times it's very difficult to defend him because
because it takes maximum discipline. Deshaun Watson might hit the thousand yard mark rushing in this yeah. game. That's how good he is, but more by design, right? He'll scramble some, but a lot of design runs with Deshaun Watson. They've got three or four quarterback run packages that you have to deal with. Some of it is quarterback counter. Some of it is quarterback draw. Some of it is attached to a run pass option. He has the choice to make at the line of scrimmage. He's an excellent decision maker, and down the stretch of the season, they have leaned on him as a runner even more. Well, of course, we talk about the quarterbacks, but folks, we got great players on both sides of the ball. A lot of All-Americans, a lot of first-team performance in their respective conferences. The guys are down there shaking hands as we're going to send it down and find out who gets the ball first. Hey guys, Our stay, we'll coin we'll toss with coin Mike Cannon us. of the Big Ten. The helmets are heads. This is tails. She'll let it land on the ground. Oklahoma, you're the visiting team. Heads or tails? Tails. They call tails. Go ahead, Lee. Good luck, gentlemen. It's heads. Clemson, you win the toss. They want to defer to the second half. Clemson wins the toss, defers to the second half. You want to receive. What end would you like to kick from? Okay, swing around there. You guys swing around there, please. So we've got the coin toss. We know who gets the football first. But before we kick, Bob Stoops with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, now you know you'll get the ball to start the game. What factors have you considered in scripting this that will help get you off to a quick start? You know, Coach Riley does a great job with that, and I stay out of his way. So uh, in the end, he'll be prepared. He knows what he wants to do, and hopefully we can execute well. I saw in your bowl prep you did a lot of ones versus ones, your starters against your starters. How did that help you prepare for a mobile quarterback like Deshaun Watson? Well, when you're chasing Baker Mayfield around, it's, it's a challenge, and uh, we got a lot of good work. Hopefully it'll help us. What are you most excited about tonight, Coach? You've been in a lot of big games. Well, I just want to see our team execute well. I'm excited for it, and I'm looking forward to it. Have a good one. Thank thanks. You. All right. There was only one blimp on their radar this year, the inexplicable loss in the Red River rivalry to Texas. Since that point, seven games of being one of the most powerful teams we've seen in a long time. And it reminds me so much of the run that Ohio State got on last year. They had a tough loss, an inexplicable loss early. And then from that point on, this Oklahoma team has played outstanding. And I really think the development of their running game to go with Baker Mayfield has been the difference. I don't know if it's ironic or not, but Clemson's only national title was a win in the Orange Bowl over number four Nebraska in 1981. It's been a 34-year drought. 15 years ago, I had the honor of calling this game at Oklahoma in a win over Florida State, a highly favored Florida State team won their na last national championship. You know what? About four hours from now, one of these teams is going to get a shot at it in Glendale, Arizona. Wow, what a scene. A lot of tiger orange and regalia purple. And throughout the stadium, a whole bunch of crimson and cream. Here come the special teams. Greg Hugo will tee it up. Alex Ross and Deron Neal are back deep. Alex has had a great career on kick returns. The 82nd Capital One Orange Bowl set to begin. And the kick out of the back of the end zone. So let's bring out Baker Mayfield. Remember, he started things off as a walk-on at Texas Tech and was the Big 12 Freshman of the Year offensively. Sat out a year after transferring to Oklahoma. And now he's a star. 
69% of his passes, 35 touchdowns, only five interceptions. You know, and I feel like we saw his coming out party. We did his game early in Knoxville. He did not play well for three quarters. They were down 17 to nothing. And in the fourth quarter, something magical happened with Baker Mayfield. And we witnessed it. And he has been on a roll ever since. Mayfield and the Sooners start their first snap at the 25. Both backs in there, Mixon and Piran. Play fake and some confusion, and Clemson comes up with a big play defensively on the first snap of the game, a loss of four. Well, good penetration inside. It was Carlos Watkins, number 94, that got the penetration up inside and got a hold of Baker Mayfield. They tried to throw quick off the play action, and Carlos Watkins very quick off the football. And they put themselves in a hole on second down, second and 16. And now it is Piran, and he gets that yardage back in a little bit more. As we take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players, and he's one of them. Another great season by the Sooners' tailback, and both those guys are exceptional in the backfield. Sterling Shepard's the go-to guy at wide receiver. Shaq Lawson was the defensive player of the year in the ACC. You mentioned Shepard. He's in the slot to the top. And Joe Mixon, the running back, is also a wide receiver. They're going to give it off to P. Ryan. Straight ahead. Big gainer. And a first down out at the 45-yard line. Pickup of 17 on third down. Little counter play. Watch the tackle. Orlando Brown pull around number 78. Get a block on the middle linebacker to spring P. Ryan. Quick snap P. Ryan again. Only about a yard this time. You won't see a lot of huddling in this game, no. folks, if you're looking for some. Again, the difference in Oklahoma ever since the Texas loss has been their recommitment to the running game. They simplified things. They started running the football better. Their offensive line developed. The last seven games, they've averaged 300 yards a game rushing with P. Ryan and Mixon. Which is double what they did prior to that. Second down and nine at the 46. Four wide receivers set for Baker Mayfield here. Blitz coming. Mayfield's going deep. And out of bounds, intended for Jarvis Baxter. Well, they're going to call an interference, but I just wonder how this was a catchable pass. Well, this ball, ball was, was three, three yards out of bounds, wasn't it? It was more than three yards out of bounds. He was running stride for stride with Ryan Carter, a backup defensive back. That's interference. Defense number 31. Normally, you tell a defensive back if the guy is running to the sideline, just continue to take him that way. Boy, I just, I, I don't well, know. That ball is not catchable in the field of play. Bill Lamagna is our official up in the booth with us, Bill. He's going to get the benefit of the doubt on that. He's been forced out with a force out. That ball did land three yards out of bounds, but a player can jump pretty good. I, I, I go with the call. So it gives the Sooners a first down at the Clemson 39 as Davo Swinney continues to steam on the Clemson sideline. Piran, nice opening off the right side, and again, the ground game in gear here. He picks up five more. This Oklahoma offensive line has just gotten better and better. They started the year with two young tackles. They had experience inside, but a redshirt freshman and Orlando Brown at left tackle and a true freshman of Samia at the right tackle. Mark Andrews in there. He's a matchup problem. And here's Baker Mayfield on a keeper. Ooh, and that might be a face mask. He's looking for one. Only a gain of one. I guess not. E.J. Goodson made the tackle. Good pursuit by the Clemson defense. Mayfield thought he had the edge. And Goodson pursuing from the inside. Did a nice job of wrapping up Baker Mayfield. I guess he just got him under the chin, not the face mask. Third down and three. They've already converted. A third down on this drive, seventh play of the drive, in fact. Mayfield fires near side, complete. First down out of bounds, D.D. Westbrook. Pickup of 10. Find the single coverage, nice read by Baker Mayfield. Get the ball, get it out of your hands quickly and find the single coverage matchup. Westbrook working one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against Alexander, who is not the easiest guy to complete passes on. Clemson trying to change up some defensive personnel as Oklahoma runs up to the ball on the 22. Derek Shepard to the top of your screen. Mayfield looking that way. Now he comes to Andrews inside the 10. Down to the one-yard line. There's your matchup problem. 
He's six foot five. He lined up in an unbalanced line. It fooled the formation, fooled Clemson. And Andrews was able to slip out into the route undetected because of the unbalanced formation and use that size to get it down inside the two yard line. Sooners first and goal at the one. P. Ryan behind Baker Mayfield. Mayfield has seven rushing touchdowns on his own this year. He's not going to get number eight there. Christian Wilkins kind of on the bottom of that pile to make the stop at second down and goal. And for the first time in about three and a half minutes, the crowd can just breathe here as we have a stoppage in play with second down upcoming. A lot of chirping going on down on the field. Both teams were at a luncheon yesterday that we were all at, and afterwards, as the teams were going to their buses, some exchange there as well. Second and goal inside the one. Neal in motion. Samaj P. Ryan. Touchdown, Oklahoma. What a way to open up the Orange Bowl, huh? 75 yard drive and 10 plays. Well, you saw the strength of P. Ryan on that run because both inside linebackers for Clemson, Goodson and Boulware, were there unblocked, and he ran right through both tackles. A man short on the extra point as Austin Seibert is in to try to make it 7 0. Extra point up and perfect. 11-16 remaining in the first quarter. 75 yards and 10 plays, converting two third downs, and then Samaj P. Ryan, his 16th rushing touchdown of the year. And the Sooners lead the Capital One Orange Bowl 7-0. DirecTV takes us inside the drive as we look at the biggest play of that OU drive. Well, a little unbalanced line. See, this is the le is the right tackle. They moved him over here, so this is the tight end. Now, what I want you to watch, watch these defenders here. They know something's up. They're trying to point to identify this is not a lineman, and Mark Andrews is able to slip wide open out of that formation and get the ball inside the two-yard line, and then watch the strength of P. Ryan running right through the two middle linebackers and taking the ball into the end zone. Impressive first drive for the Oklahoma Sooner offense. Let's see if Clemson can have an answer. Nick Hodgson to kick off. C.J. Fuller and Artavis Scott are back deep. That's Artavis, the leading receiver for the Tigers. This will be returnable. Maybe. He's got to shag it down way over there at the two-yard line. Scott Trying to bounce it out to the 20. He's not going to make it. So out comes Deshaun Watson. Top-ranked dual-threat quarterback in ESPN's rankings in the year 2013. 4-1 in 2014 before he tore his ACL. This team, the Davia, this year the Davy O'Brien winner. As the best quarterback in the country and a first-team All-American as well. Finished third in the Heisman balloting. And he's got to take over at about the 18-yard line to open things up for Clemson. Excellent decision maker. Plays with great poise and calmness. And his team needs that from him right here. Yeah, they do. He's going to throw on first down. And he's going to go deep. And it's overshot and complete. Let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. And probably the most underrated player maybe on this Clemson team is Wayne Gallman, their tailback, who comes in with over 1,300 yards. We mentioned Artavis Scott, their leading receiver with 84 catches. Defensively, Eric Stryker, the undisputed leader of that Sooner defense. Has the all-time record for sacks for an Oklahoma quarterback. Nobody else even close. Rocky Kalmus would actually be the closest. Second down at 10. Straight up the middle is Gallman, and he got four out to the 22. 
Nice tackle in there by Jordan Evans because Gallman had some room in front of him. If Evans doesn't make a sure tackle, as we get ready to see Clemson's first third down situation, we already saw Mark Andrews make an impact for the Oklahoma offense. Jordan Leggett for Clemson, number 16, is their counter to that. This is him right in the slot. Clemson was 12th in the country in their third down conversions. They'll have to get six here. Striker comes on a blitz that throws on target. Complete first down, Sharon Peak. Uh, just beautiful timing by Watson. He started reading the right side of the formation, knew that he had what he wanted back with Sharon Peak, and perfect timing on that throw in between the two Oklahoma defenders. So a little more breathing room to work. Clemson at the 38 yard line. Five receivers set. Deshaun with an empty backfield. Yep. Empty set. They give him a read pass option a lot. Quarterback draw or throw. There's a quarterback draw. And he fakes the throw. Got a yard out of it, actually. So we mentioned came in with 887 yards rushing and 11 touchdowns on the ground. Good job by Oklahoma on both first down plays. You want to try to put this offense behind the chains as much as you can. Second down and nine and second down and ten on the first one. Pretty good. And the counter is to Goldman. And Goldman broke one tackle and got out where it'll be third down again. Picked up four more. This linebacking core of Oklahoma. Bob Stoops told us yesterday it's as athletic of a group as they've ever had. And that's saying quite a bit. Yeah. Dominique Alexander and Jordan Evans. And then Eric Stryker, who's also kind of a defensive end, blitzer. And then they've got Devontae Bond, number 23. Those four linebackers play a lot, and they are all rangy athletic guys. Third down again, third and five from the 43. Play fake. Watson cuts inside. Can't get enough for the first down. He got three, but Alexander ran him down. And the Tigers will have to kick. Alexander did a nice job of staying at home. He didn't have any coverage responsibilities, and he was just kind of there keeping an eye on the quarterback and maintaining leverage and brought him down short of the first down. These all comes out to punt. He's had 19 kicks this year inside the 20-yard line as Sterling Shepard stands back at the 13. Spiral, and that'll be number 20 inside the 20. Oklahoma's going to take over at about the 17-yard line with a seven-point lead when we come back. The 2015 Capital One Orange Bowl, brought to you by the Capital One Quicksilver Card. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase every day. Ford, we go further so you can. Direct TV, call 1 800 Direct TV. Allstate, proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? And Taco Bell's Crunch Wrap Sliders, four full size flavors, just a buck each. Our aerial coverage today brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. If you look in on Sun Lap Stadium, Miami Gardens, Florida, if you're buried under a snowdrift someplace, we apologize because it is about 84 degrees right now. So we send our condolences if you're yes. having a bad weather day. Well, right away, a bad sign for the Clemson defense. Two plays over 15 yards in that opening drive. That's what's hurt them the last two games of the year. They gave up 23 plays of 15 yards or more in the games against South Carolina and North Carolina, and that trend continuing so far. Both Piran and Mixon in the backfield, but it's a play action, and a throw is batted somewhere between Derek Shepard and the throw by Baker Mayfield. Not sure who got a hand on that. There's Brent, Brent Vanables, the defensive coordinator. Yeah, he spent 13 years of his career at Oklahoma, very close with Bob Stoops, was recruited to Kansas State to play football by Bob Stoops, coached there, and then he was hired by Bob Stoops as an assistant. Very close to the family, and uh, yet this move has been a great move for Brent and his family as well, going to Clemson and working for Dabo Sweeney. Bob said yesterday, I consider him a brother, and if he's not a brother, he's a first cousin. And of course, Bob's brother, Mike, <laughs> is on the staff as his defensive coordinator. 
So first down, a second down, I beg your pardon, from the 17 yard line. And not much there for P. Ryan. Might have gotten a yard out of it. And they're still running him back. B.J. Goodson hit him first, and then Ben Bolwer is the guy that dragged him back to the five yard line. Brings up third down. Good discipline by the defensive front seven of Clemson, staying right in their gaps and closing that running lane and bring up a third and long. This is what Clemson wanted to get him in. Third down and nine. Second best in the country coming in. 25% allowing on third down. Only bringing three men. Mayfield steps up in the pocket. Here he goes doing his thing, but it might not be enough. Drop back at the three-yard line by Shaq Lawson. Well, Shaq Lawson got it, but Kevin Dodd forced him right into his buddy. This was a three-man rush. Watch Kevin Dodd. He's going to force the action, and Shaq Lawson is going to benefit from it. Dodd is going to force him to leave the pocket. And when that happens, he's met by Shaq Lawson waiting for him. Good pressure by a three-man rush. Two defensive ends in the safety, J. Ron Curse. And a 14-yard loss pins Austin Seibert back with his back foot almost on the end line. It'll be a tough spot to kick out of. He got it away. End over end kick. Not a good one at all. Wow. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 28-yard line which is where the first down marker was when they started this drive. A 24-yard punt is all. So he was a little worried about yeah. what he had to work with, too, I guess. Well, and he's been brilliant. I mean, he's a true freshman, the only one in the FBS that has handled both kicking and punting duties all season. And he's had a brilliant year. But that time, he got a little bit spooked by that end line and shanked the punt. So great field position for the Tiger offense. Jordan Leggett needs to get involved for this Clemson offense. He's up at the top in the slot right here. Number 16, first down at the 28. The throw is batted in the air and knocked away. And it was Charles Tapper who got a hand on it as we check in with Holly. Well, as good as that tackle for loss was for Shaq Lawson, it may have been costly. He came over to the sideline limping heavily. He crashed to the ground. Finally, he was helped up. He's now sitting on the examination table. Danny Poole, the great athletic trainer, is looking at him right now. I'll give you an update as soon as we have it. He was a defensive player of the year in the ACC. Here's Deshaun Watson on the run, and he's got a first down, I think, at the 18-yard line. See, this is quarterback design run. It's a counter. They're pulling a linemen and the back so you've got two lead blockers everybody accounted for and a quarterback who is willing to take a couple hits when he runs it Clemson was 90 percent of their red zone scoring including 30 touchdowns they've got it inside the 18 yard line Wayne Gallman straight ahead power run for Gallman down around the 13. See, as exciting as these two quarterbacks are and as exciting as the passing games are for both these teams and the numbers, this is still a line of scrimmage game. Just like the one later on tonight, whoever wins and controls the line of scrimmage, if you have balance in your offense, run and pass, you have the upper hand. Second down and four, Gallman flushes out of that backfield as a receiver to the bottom of your screen. Deshaun Watson, quarterback draw. Heads left, cuts back. Dives forward, short by one. Third and one coming up. See, again, when they go empty backfield with five receivers, they give him a run-pass choice. He can either make a quick throw like a wide receiver screen, or he can pull it down and run the draw. Oklahoma knows that, but knowing it and stopping it are two different things. Goldman flanking Watson on a third down and one. He'll keep it again. First down, and then some. Dives down inside the six. See, down the stretch, they have used him as a runner by design a lot more. Same play we saw earlier. They pull the guard, they lead with the back, and the quarterback running the power play, the counter play, to the right side of the formation. Claps it first and goal. Watson rolls to throw, fires low incomplete, intended for Hunter Renfro. Shaq Lawson on the sideline, as Holly said, and he looks upset. It would be such a shame if 
his season ends on the second series of the ball game. He's got an ice bag on his left knee. Meanwhile, his offense back on the field. He's the one that put him in this spot. Second down and goal at the six yard line. Leggett, the tight end that Todd's talking about, is in tight, and now Watson tells him to move. Watson, keeper, striker from behind. Loss of three. Well, Goldman missed the block on striker, which is easy to do because of his quickness. You have to cut off the backside if you run counter like that. That time they used the guard and the tight end leg it, but you have to account for that end man on the line and the back. Gallman was too slow trying to cut off striker. Third down and goal. Probably the biggest target out there, wide receiver wise, is Sean Peak. And he's up top. Third and goal at the nine. Watson fires, corner, up high. Was it intercepted? Very close. Ahmad Thomas says incomplete. It was intended for Leggett. Now Leggett was open. Ahmad Thomas working against a bigger guy. Did a nice job of coming through the receiver to the ball. Made a nice play on the football to knock it away. Ahmad Thomas, one of four Florida natives from Miami. Needed a lot of tickets for this game. Yeah. Played his last regular season high school game in this stadium and just made a huge play defending his own end zone. Ledge, I think if it would have still been inside the five or so, they might have thought about going for it on fourth down. But out here, after that loss by the play by striker, it becomes a 26-yard field goal attempt. And it's perfect as Hugo knocks it through to put Clemson on the board. 345 remaining first quarter of the Capital One Orange Bowl. Sooners lead by four. Welcome back to the Capital One Orange Bowl. Oklahoma with a 7-3 lead over the Clemson Tigers. Don't forget, coming up after our game, college football playoff semifinals roll on with a Goodyear Cotton Bowl classic. Connor Cook leading number three Michigan State against Heisman winner Derrick Henry and number two Alabama with a spot in the national championship game on the line. Game also is streaming on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Those are two of the stars you'll see when we're done here. Well, Holly reported about the injury to loss and he is not in the game now. He's replaced by a true freshman, Austin Bryant. I wouldn't be surprised to see Oklahoma challenge him and run right at him as much as they can here in this possession. First down at the 25, empty backfield, quick throw, goes out to Mixon, and Mixon got two before he's dropped there, and we check in with Holly. It doesn't look like good news. Sheck Lawson had a brace on that left knee. They've taken the brace off. They've put a big pack of ice on that left knee. He's walking around shaking his head. Everybody's consoling him. It doesn't look like he can return at this time. We will see if they can reevaluate him at a half. So the player of the year on defense in the ACC can only be a cheerleader, at least for the time being. Second and eight, Mayfield. Fires down the middle, complete, and a first down. And it's Sterling Shepard. Well, Mayfield does a nice job staying in the pocket. They move him out of the pocket quite a bit because of his height, but that time, a nice throwing window. Quick snap, quick throw, wide receiver screen to Westbrook, made a couple Tigers miss. And he's got about eight yards out of that play and into Clemson territory. Really nice job by Duran Neal, one of the other receivers, number five out there. When you throw those wide out screens, your other guys have to block on the perimeter. And it was the block by Neal that allowed that to be a positive game. Second down and two at the Clemson 49. Joe Mixon is the lone setback. Mayfield thought about going deep. Now he'll think about getting the first down. And he got it with plenty to spare. Pick up a seven on the scramble. Well, again, you're talking about taking a guy out of the lineup in Lawson, who is one of the premier pass rushers. Here's his replacement right there. Gets picked up on the inside stunt by the center, Darlington. And a nice decision by Baker Mayfield to run for the first down. First down at the 42. Lawson becoming... A coach on the Clemson sideline right now for his understudy. Both Mixon and P. Ryan in the backfield with Mayfield on first down. Gives it to P. Ryan. Got three or four. 
You know, the irony for Lawson is this was his first year as being the starter. He was a backup to Vic Beasley the last two years, who's now playing with the Atlanta Falcons. He got a lot of reps, and he was very productive as a backup. And this year, as a first-time starter, 22-and-a-half tackles for loss and nine-and-a-half sacks to pace the ACC. And the country in those tackle for loss categories. Second down and seven. Sterling Shepard in motion settles in. Down to the bottom of your screen. They're going the other way with Mixon on a little flip. And Mixon's got a first down at the 30. Now Oklahoma with a little mix of everything. We've seen unbalanced line. Now we see a little shovel pass inside. And great run pass balance with a couple quarterback scrambles sprinkled in there as well. Good looking drive again to the 30 so far as Mixon takes it for three more. Travis Blanks, first guy to meet him. And we've got a flag. Mike Cannon, again, as our referee on the Big Ten. Talking down and distance here on what it's going to be. Here's a call. After the play was over on sportsmanlike conduct, offense number 36. 15 yard penalty. It will be second down. That is number 36's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. Now you see him mixing it up after the whistle. And Dimitri Flowers. Now, I think it was the clapping part that drew the penalty not the not the contact and that's very uncharacteristic for Dimitri Flowers he's Again, one of their most versatile guys and really. smart super smart has done a really great job this year doing a lot of different things just kind of let the emotion get the best of them in that particular play right now he's got a lot of different earfuls from the coaches including Bob Stoops that backs it all the way up to the 42 yard line or second down and 22 he Ryan will try to get some of it back back to the 39 got collared there by bj goodson bj goodson an interesting story in talking with the clemson coaches they said had he not come on to be the leader and the leading tackler he was kind of a three-year guy where you go yeah. hey is he ever going to play and they felt like in this defense that position has to play extremely well and he's done that all year came in as their leading tackler with a 127 stops on the year he's had a few already here in the first half Third down and a whole bunch. Shepard, the wide out to the top. They're just going to play it safe, and Mixon only got about a yard or so. Nice play wow. by Christian Wilkins, the freshman. Really nice play. I mean, he was laying on the ground and just kind of reached out and got an ankle tackle and stopped it for no gain. And had they gained some yardage, you might have seen Oklahoma go for it on fourth down. But with that play, probably a punt. Good first quarter. Oklahoma, number four in the country, leading number one, seven to three. Trailing number four, Oklahoma, seven to three. As we're just about set to start the second quarter. Brad Nestle, Tom Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our ESPN crew in Miami Gardens, Florida. Both teams only one penalty in the game, but both costly. Clemson's pass interference penalty kept their Oklahoma's touchdown drive going, and Oklahoma's penalty probably prevented them from a field goal attempt. The penalty on Flowers. Pretty sure there won't be a return here <laughs> of this Oklahoma punt either. As Seibert's been so good at pinning teams deep. They always keep the inside the 20 stat. Bob Stoops said to us yesterday, I don't know how many he's got inside the 10, but he's got a bunch. Our Tavis Scott is the guy that waits back at the 10, and now flag flies in. will be a delay of game as he wants a little more room to work. This might be declined as well, though. We'll see. Delay of game, kicking team. Penalties declined. Face fourth down. It's a good chance for Seibert to uh, erase that shank punt. Yeah. He doesn't need any more distance than he had on that shank. Just needs to drop it down in there softly. He would take that same distance perfectly right now as long as it was just bouncing around and down by his special teams. And watched in practice. These guys here worked on running down there and catching it 
in the air. Behind Seibert, low snap. He had to go down and get it. Now he just kind of pooches it down there, and it's caught inside the five. Beautiful as Todd was just drawing up. Jordan Thomas catches it at the five, at the uh, three-yard line. 33-yard kick. Deshaun Watson's got himself a problem inside his own five on offense when we come back. Well, so far, you can't do any better than Clemson has done on the season. 13-0, the ACC champions. Fifth straight, 10-win-plus season. And they only had seven in the previous 116 years. Notre Dame, Florida State, North Carolina. Their biggest wins, including over North Carolina for the ACC title. But they've got themselves a handful right now. Deshaun Watson, the lowest percentage and completions in a first quarter for him in his entire career. And now he's got to start at the four-yard line. He's actually standing in his own end zone. And he's going to keep it. And he's got a lot of room to run. Deshaun Watson off to the races. Cuts back to the middle of the field and all the way to midfield. That's the Deshaun Watson we're used to seeing. Well, great block by the freshman left tackle, Hyatt. And then a wide receiver out on the perimeter, Trevion Thompson. Watch 75 get his block. And then on the perimeter, Trevion Thompson, number one, blocking on Jordan Thomas. And a dire situation turns into great field position in just one play. First down, now he wants to go to the air. Still may run. Fires across his body, incomplete. Closest guy was Leggett. That's a tough throw for anybody. And he's limping a little bit. See the brace on his left knee. Remember, his knee was surgically repaired after uh, after the injury last season when he went four and one before getting hurt. I should mention Clemson playing without one of their best weapons here down the stretch. Wide receiver Deion Kane, the freshman out of Tampa, Florida, sent home two days ago. And he had been on a tear with touchdown catches. Here's an end around to Scott. And Artavis gets five. They thought Deion Kane is probably going to be in the mold of those big time receivers. He was kind of taking the place of Mike Williams, who they lost in the opener, who was their main receiver a year ago, expected to be their big downfield threat this year. A neck injury in the opener sidelined him. He'll be back next year. As will Deion Kane. Mike with a collision on the goal post in that game to end his season. Third down. And four. And number four. Fires down the middle and it's in and out of the hands of Leggett. Should have had it. Well, should have had it, but it wasn't a great throw by Deshaun Watson either. He had protection. The ball was a little bit low for Leggett. Probably should have been caught. But they did flip the field with that 46-yard run by Deshaun Watson. So it's going to be in Barry down in their end. They're at the OU 44. Teasdale comes out to punt. Sterling Shepard back at the 10-yard line. Well, they oh, act boy, like they might fake already. it, and they are going to fake it, and the throw is complete. <laughs> I thought he was going to kick it, but he got it to Christian Wilkins. 31 yards on fourth down. Unbelievable. Dabo Sweeney trusting his punter. They liked what they saw, and he lets them make the throw. In the ACC championship game, he got all over his punter for making a decision on his own. They slipped the man out of the backfield. He was unaccounted for, and the punter makes a huge play on the fake punt. Not a bad catch and run by Wilkins, the big fella either. Turns into a fullback right there, and he almost took it down the sideline. And now Clemson with a little trickery here, and they get it down to the six. Ray Ray McLeod, shades of Clemson of old. That was a little fumble -rooski play. A little sugar huddle fumble -rooski. Back to back trick plays by Clemson. Well, you know, that that call right there is something, one of the reasons why Dabo Sweeney is so loved and endeared by his players. Love his willingness to take risks and believe in his guys. Second and two at the five. Watson, quarterback draw. Deshaun Watson, touchdown, Clemson.
Sometimes taking a risk pays off. Back to back plays it did. And the Tigers in front. The difference between when you fake a punt on your own and when you do it when the coach calls. <laughs> the big difference. Hugo's extra point is good. Well, first you gotta have some guts. Bring your own guts. As Dabo would say, that took guts. 31 yards. Then Deshaun Watson says, I've done this before. I'll do it again. 96-yard drive and seven plays. top rank Clemson in front. The 2015 Capital One Orange Bowl. Brought to you by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. Honda. And Sherwin-Williams. Make the most of your color with the very best paint. Ask Sherwin-Williams. Back in Miami Gardens, Florida. Top right, Clemson now leads 10-7 after a 96-yard drive in seven plays, and three of them were pretty wacky. Google set to kick. Alex Ross and Deron Neal are back deep. Ross will have a shot at this one from the two-yard line. Alex Ross out to the 25. Time for our Capital One pivotal performance on that last drive, Todd. Well, we talked about the design quarterback runs with Deshaun Watson. This is quarterback draw. So you block out, you block out. Center takes his man that way. And the lead blocker is the back, Coleman, on the middle linebacker. Show pass, pause, and then follow the lead block by the back into the end zone. Excellent execution by the left guard, the left tackle, and the center, and then the key lead block by the tailback. And the 12th rushing touchdown of the year for that young man. So now Baker Mayfield and the Sooners will try to answer after having the lead taken away from them. First down at the 25. Joe Mixon in motion. They're going to flare it out to Mixon. Got a block from his wide out. The stiff arm doesn't do anything, though. He's dropped by J. Ron Kirsch. You know, in that opening drive, Oklahoma had two impact plays, two plays of over 15 yards. They haven't had one since. So the Clemson defense, under Brent Venables, has settled down somewhat in terms of stopping the big plays. Well, we mentioned the inexplicable loss to Texas. They're behind for the first time since then. Quick slant, great throw and catch. Jeffrey Mead. A pickup of 11 and a first down, and now Baker Mayfield says, let's get up to the line, guys, and keep it going. Jeffrey Meade got a lot of work in practice. He hasn't had a lot of catches coming in, but he's six foot five and is another matchup guy. Only four catches coming into the game. That was his fifth on the season. Mayfield has hit his last six passes. He'll throw again. Down the middle. That's seven in a row. And it's the same guy, Meade, and a pickup of eight. The day I was at practice, there was a lot of work with Mark Andrews and Meade. And again, because of their length, working on these corners of Clemson. Matchup situations favoring Oklahoma. Second down and two. P. Ryan, first down run and a couple more to boot. As he's got it out to the 48-yard line, they'll move the chains. Good penetration by Roderick Byers, number 40, just not able to bring P. Ryan down. P. Ryan, a very difficult guy to tackle at 230 pounds. First down, Sooners at their own 48-yard line. Mayfield keeps it, and he's going deep. And a little contact at about the 10-yard line intended for Sterling Shepard. No flags. Now, this Sooners is... are looking for one, but they're not going to get it. No, and I don't think there should be. Mackenzie Alexander, the top cover guy for Clemson, is singled up on Sterling Shepard. There's a little pushing and shoving by both guys, and the ball's overthrown. Good coverage by Alexander on a one-man route, basically. Mackenzie Alexander hasn't allowed a touchdown reception in the last 21 games. Didn't allow one there either. From Amokali, Florida, 
about 13 or 14 Clemson players from the state of Florida. Second down and 10. Blitz coming off the corner. Play action. Piron picks up the blitz, but Clemson's going to pick up the quarterback. Third sack of the game. Even with that, they're all ACC defensive linemen. You can't give him seams when you rush the passer. Watch the seams all get closed up as they go into the quarterback. You can't get wild and rush straight up the field and leave him seams to scramble. They did a nice job of closing all the gaps and then wrapping up the quarterback. Got a flag on the play. Big loss that would bring up third down and 17, depending on what the penalty's about. This Clemson defense that played Oklahoma last year, you can't make a whole lot out of that game because it was two completely After different the teams. Play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number three of the offense. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number two of the defense. Those penalties offset. I don't know. Those two of the best players on the field are down to one unsportsmanlike, and you're going to be out of the ball game. These guys got to stay on the field. Yeah, I mean, it, there's not a, there's no need for it. I mean, there's a, too much chippiness. Again, there was chippiness after the banquet yesterday. There's chippiness before the game, between coaches, between players. You got to keep your poise. That's Mackenzie Alexander getting into it, one of the Oklahoma assistant coaches, and Baker Mayfield. A lot of talking. A lot of plans, what needs to happen. You mentioned yesterday after the luncheon, there was even some bus rocking. Yep. There was some stuff going on, and Shaq Lawson, who's no longer in the game, was one of the ringleaders of what happened in the buses after the game. Third down at 17. Mayfield has time, throws down the middle, in and out of the hands of Deron Neal. It wouldn't have been a first down, but it would have been a nice pickup of 14 or 15. Ball a little bit behind Neal. Mayfield hasn't missed too many, 9 of 12, but he hasn't gotten the big throws down the field yet. Clemson doing a pretty good job, again, after that first drive of limiting the big plays. Austin Seibert comes in to pump third straight possession. One of the things Ending with a punt right now. One of the things Dabo Sweeney told us about this team, he said, you know what, we don't have to play perfect to win and our guys don't flinch. They haven't flinched here in this first half. Again, the snap a little bit low. This is a nice punt. Seibert's going to have a shot at it, though. Uh, rather, Scott's going to have a shot at it from the 15-yard line. Picked up about four on the return. So Clemson out in front, 10-7. to seven. They held defensively, and they'll turn it over to their quarterback when we come back. Hi, I'm Sage Steele here in New York City, Times Square, where everyone is talking about college football yes including ryan seacrest who will join me coming up at halftime all right sage thanks Times square be sure to tune in the buick halftime report sage will interview ryan seacrest as he gets ready for dick clark's new year's rock and eve at eight o'clock eastern and eight o'clock pacific on abc so ryan seacrest gets to work with sage Steele and jenny mccarthy tonight i'm stuck with you hey hey <laughs> hey clemson with a lead and the ball at their own 19-yard line. Keeper by Watson. Now that's that's been the uh, the answer for Clemson so far in the first half. Deshaun Watson only two of eight throwing the football, one of his worst starts to a game, but that was his ninth carry, and he now is up his 72 yards rushing the football. So again, the quarterback runs by design down the stretch, a big part of this Clemson offense. So he's about 50 yards away from hitting that magical 1,000-yard rushing mark for a quarterback. Now it's Goldman, and Goldman spinning his way. Whoa, what a move. Well, Stryker got him from behind, but he still might have the first down. Well, that shows you his strength, Goldman, and the never-say-die and quick attitude of Stryker. The play went to Stryker's side. Here he comes on a blitz. He's not able to make the play, but he never gets up, gives up on it. Watch 19 chase it from the backside and ends up making the tackle and bringing up a third and short. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he is a football player. Third down and a yard. This is Watson all the way. And he's got the first, and look out if he gets loose. Out across the 40 to the 43. See, Another 15 yards. The reason you run the quarterback so much is you gain an extra blocker. They give a lead blocker with Goldman. 
and he just takes out Sanchez. Watch Gallman lead and get the block on Sanchez. You get an extra blocker. Plus, if you're a defense trying to defend a quarterback that runs by design, you can't blitz as much. You have to be a little bit more conservative so you don't give up the big play. Just under nine to play in the half. First down, Clemson throw complete. It's going to be another first down. Artavis Scott got away. Stryker gets way back there to make what might be a touchdown-saving tackle. Pick up the 20. Well, only the second catch of the game for the leading receiver for Clemson, Artavis Scott. And you see what makes him special, his ability after the catch. He's very strong in his upper body, a poor tackle attempt by Jordan Thomas. And Artavis Scott adds about 10 more yards. Clemson on the move again. Quick throw out, Scott again. Tiptoes the sideline as we check in with Holly. It's pretty remarkable what we see Artavis Scott out here doing for Clemson. Number three had arthroscopic knee surgery to clean up some meniscus just on December 7th. Now you see him out here playing with no brace. He said, I don't want one. It slows me down. He looks pretty quick right now. Second team all ACC performer came in with 84 catches. Had one there to bring up second down. And now it's first down again as Goldman spins inside the 20. Well, we're seeing some balance, some excellent play calling right now by the co-offensive coordinators, Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott from Clemson. Out for injured player. We've seen Watson run, Watson run, and now Gallman getting heated up a little bit. Again, this balance and the fact that you have to defend the quarterback run makes it very difficult. There's Tony, the co-offensive coordinator. Former Clemson player, former wide receiver for the Tigers of injured players, Jordan Evans on the play he was kind of involved at the end of the play that Gallman landed on him. Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott took over Please for Chad Morris who took the head eight, job at one. SMU. They took over before the bowl game last year against Oklahoma and they did well over 500 yards. They didn't have Deshaun Watson in that game. Their quarterback in that game was Cole Stout the senior but he was 26 of 36 for 319 yards. Interesting, both Baker Mayfield and Deshaun Watson were on the sidelines watching that night. And now they're the centerpieces in this one. First down, Clemson back in the red zone. Over 200 yards now in total offense. The poise, the calmness of Deshaun Watson has really been evident in this first half. Blitz coming. The throw is on target to the outside to Peak, and Peak gets seven or eight more. The threat of the quarterback run has put this Oklahoma defense back on their heels a little bit. This is a defense under Mike Stoops that likes to bring pressure. They like to attack. And they're out of attack mode right now because the quarterback run has really neutralized their aggressiveness. Second down at two. Great situation to be in. I've had quite a few of these. Second down at short. Play fake. Watson in trouble. Down he goes. No, he's still on his feet. Deshaun Watson somehow got away from Tapper. It's amazing what these quarterbacks can do sometimes. Yeah, I mean, this looked like a sack for sure. The throw wasn't there on timing. Good inside rush by Tapper. And this is why you see an offense that has only given up 14 sacks coming into the game. It's and you know what? <laughs> That's the first one they've given up yeah. 207 passing attempts going back to the Florida State game. That's a long time between sacks. Here comes an end around and maybe a pass. Artavis Scott, ball up and tipped by a Oklahoma cheerleader. About 10 yards out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you what, back-to-back -back plays by the Oklahoma defense right when they needed them. Stryker made that play. Tapper made the play before. Two of your leaders, two of your best players all season come up with back-to-back -back huge plays when your defense needs it. We're going to flag down. Intentional grounding. Offense number three. The person who threw the ball was, did not take the original snap, so he does not have the right to ground the ball. Lost it down, fourth well, down. When it's a wide receiver and not the quarterback, is that, that the call, Bill? Well, I'm just wondering if there's a receiver in the area, which there was, the quarterback, Deshaun Watson, how does that not count for being able to throw the ball? 
when you're not the person who took the snap, you're not, and you get outside the tackle box, you're not allowed to throw it away out of bounds crossing the line. I Only see. the person who took the snap, that receiver was not in the area. So Greg Hugel will try a 36-yard field goal to try to add to Clemson's lead. Hugel's kick is up, and it is good. So the penalty was very big. They had seven more in their sights. They had to settle for three. Top-ranked Clemson leads by six. Well, the National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Peppers in Dallas for the second playoff semifinal, which is coming up here on ESPN at 8 o'clock. Let's get take a look at the uh, brackets of how we got here after a long season. Oklahoma the fourth. Number 14, Clemson obviously undefeated. Number one, Michigan State and Alabama, three versus two. The bracket brought to you by AT&T. All four teams have their sights set on a shot at the title in Glendale, Arizona, around midnight Eastern time on January 11th. 13 unanswered Clemson points. They lead 13-7. After holding a six-point lead, they have 122 in a row. But Oklahoma averages almost 46 points a game, so we're not done yet. From the goal line is Alex Ross. And Ross had an opening, got it across the 25, and got dropped there by J. Ron Curse. Oklahoma, a great season, 11-1. We talked about it. First outright Big 12 title since 2010. After that loss in the Red River rivalry, they won seven in a row, and they were really rolling, especially at the end. Their schedule was backloaded. They beat Baylor, TCU, and then, of course, in Bedlam, took care of Oklahoma State easily, 58-23. to That's why they're here. Yeah. Well, an improvement all the way around. Offensively, much better balance in their offense. Defensively, great improvement in their pass defense. Last year, they were an outstanding run defense, one of the worst in the country in pass defense. They really balanced that out this season. First down at the 28. P. Ryan with Mayfield in the backfield. He's throwing all the way here. Got it out. Jarvis Baxter. Baxter with a stiff arm out of bounds. A flag. A flag on the play at the end of it after a 13-yard gain. There was a stiff arm involved over there. And I don't know if it was Jarvis Baxter with a hand to the face. And this might be on the offense. Baxter was a good read by Mayfield. Baxter was the inside receiver working on a safety, T.J. Green. Personal foul, face mask. Offense, number one. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. We'll replay first down. Yeah. Huge penalty there. Would have been a first down on a 13-yard 13, a 13 pickup. Yeah, that's a huge penalty. Here's a better look, I think. Yeah, that's a good call. Trying to throw stiff arm out there, but his location was not very good. So they back it up to the 26-yard line, a first and 12 because of the spot foul. Straight up the gut with P. Ryan. Got collared at the 29. Bring up second down. There's our man, the biggest Sooner fans in the world, country music superstar, Toby Keith. Well, he's been busy. He was over watching the basketball team in Hawaii about a week ago, and now he's here in South Florida with his wife, Tricia, watching the Sooner football team. Oh, nice play on the ball by Sterling Shepard. Yeah, Mayfield was under duress. Clemson going with the blitz. It was single coverage. Again, Shepard working on Alexander, or actually working on the inside defender, Ryan Carter. Great adjustment to the yep. ball. Back shoulder throw, and Shepard makes a beautiful adjustment in the air against tight coverage. <laughs> Sterling, of course, whose dad, former Sooner, wore that same number. Sideline interference on the Clemson bench. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Whoa. First half. Can we see anything else weird in the first half? Davo Sweeney saying, huh? I don't see anybody right there. Coaches are trying to say he was out of bounds. You know what, guys? Let's just let the guys play the game on the field. Oh, goodness. Wow. Let so the some, guys play the game. Some big penalties, and now Oklahoma's at the 29-yard line. Three wide outs to the top of the screen. Mayfield's going that way. Flips it out to Baxter. Baxter made one man miss. Puts his head down. Clemson will drop him. 
inside the 25 yard line. Cordray Tankersley made the stop. Nice answer drive by Oklahoma right now. Mayfield directing traffic. Mayfield gonna lob it to the corner. Caught but out of bounds, dropped it anyway. It was Deron Neal and Ryan Carter was covering. You know, we mentioned Lincoln Riley, the new offensive coordinator. 32 years old, came from East Carolina, was a quarterback at Texas Tech, and, and worked under Mike Leach at Texas Tech. And Mike Leach was Bob Stoops' first offensive coordinator when he first took the job in Norman, and he kind of went back to his roots and said, let's go back to this air raid offense. We were successful. We were one of the first to do it. Let's start doing it again, and uh, it has really paid off. Be interesting to see if this was two-down territory for the Sooners. Third down at three. And a whistle. They might have taken a timeout before the snap. They did. They want to make sure they've got the play that they want. Oklahoma. With 541 remaining, trying to regain the lead. Big third down coming when we come back. Currently 13 to 7, Clemson, in the Capital One Orange Bowl here in Miami Gardens, Florida. After Michigan State and Alabama. Don't forget, coming up later tonight, you can stick around. Sports Center at night with Scott Van Pelt. He'll break down both semifinal games, preview the national championship game. Bring in the new year, Sports Center at night. After Michigan State and Alabama on ESPN. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. I'm sure Scott will have something, probably some funny hat on <laughs> over, uh, later on tonight. Oklahoma took that timeout. This is only the second third down play. They've had third and five or less. Very important play right now for the Sooner offense. Nixon back in there as a wide receiver and now comes in motion and sets up in the backfield on third down and four. Clemson trying to change up defensively as Mayfield asking for the ball. Baker Mayfield fires near sides. Got it. Inside. The five-yard line is Sterling Shepard. Boy, a lot of room for Sterling Shepard. He was the slot receiver and the safety. J. Ron Curse was way off in coverage. That was an easy read and throw for Baker Mayfield on third down and under five yards. This is where Baker Mayfield's at his best when he can create things on first and goal at the four-yard line. Nixon, who did he get whacked at the line of scrimmage? Big hit by B.J. Goodson and Kevin Dodd. Uh, Kevin Dodd did a nice job. Watch the defensive end, number 98. Just kind of hold his ground here, maintain leverage, and get the first hit on Mixon. Second and goal. Back at the five. Westbrook in motion. Mayfield. Yeah, Changes his field, throws back the other way. Dangerous throw, broken up by McKenzie Alexander. Boy, that could have been yeah. a big-time disaster. Yeah, that was one of those ones that uh, was a very risky throw by Maker, Baker Mayfield. You have to maintain coverage when he starts to scramble. This is a long throw from the right hash all the way across the field against their best defender. And Baker Mayfield was very lucky that that didn't turn into a bad mistake. In the Tennessee games and the Baylor games, he improvised to get the touchdown when they needed. See if he does some of that here. Empty backfield. Mark Andrews is in as the unbalanced line again. Third and goal. Mayfield lofts it. Andrews had his hand on it, but it's broken up by Tankersley. Fourth and goal. In the opening drive, they fooled Clemson's defense with that formation. Second time around, Clemson was not fooled. This is the second time now both teams have had a first and goal at the six-yard line and had to settle for field goals. And this will be Seibert from 22. They try to make it a three-point game. They got close, but he got it up and good. 
And celebrating its 11th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets All-State makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds. For each field goal, an extra point kicked. To date, All-State's contributed millions in scholarship funds. And that 22-yard field goal that hit the All-State Nets has made this a three-point game. That was a 67-yard drive, 10 plays, even though they were looking for an opportunity to get a touchdown, obviously, and try to take the lead back. They'll take the three right now and run with it because they know there's a lot of football left. Well, I should correct myself. I said it was an unbalanced line. It was not. It was a normal formation, but they were trying to go to Mark Andrews on that particular play, and Clemson was very clued into it. So a couple key defensive stops by both teams when they needed it the most. You know, we talk about, you talk to coaches, and they always point out two things in particular. Turnover yeah. uh, difference in a ball game. And Clemson, by the way, comes in undefeated, minus two on the season. But also penalties. Man, we had some weird penalties yeah. here in the last five minutes or so. Yeah, we had. Have. Some of them a lack of poise some of them just kind of a bizarre nature You got to maintain your poise and overcome those things And I think you've got two coaches in Bob Stoops and Dabo Sweeney about as good as it gets in keeping the teams poise held together Kickoff will not be returned So it'll bring it out to the 25 So Clemson's got it back up by three and they still got 441 to go and all three of their timeouts they won their first and only national championship, finishing a perfect 81 season and actually the 82 Orange Bowl. I mentioned earlier it was over number four, Nebraska. They capped off a perfect year. Homer Jordan and those guys, the Clemson Tigers, and that's the only one they've ever had. And now they are a half away <laughs> if they maintain their lead for at least having a chance at another one against either Michigan State or Alabama. Here's Gallman. Gallman's been a tough runner today, yeah. and that's four more tough yards as we check in with Holly. Well, the second leading tackler for this Sooner team, Jordan Evans, their linebacker, is likely done for the game. The doctors have just looked at his right pectoral or kind of up under his right armpit area. They've put ice on him, no pads. The good news, his backup, Frank Shannon, has played a lot. Three starts this year, 36 tackles. He just made another one right there. Yeah, he did, Holly. I was going to say, he was in on that stop. Yeah. The guy Clemson needs to get going is Jordan Leggett, the tight end. They've targeted him three times, no catches so far. Down the middle. That one's caught by Artavis Scott. And it's a first down for the Tigers out at the 47-yard line. A pickup of 18. Nice little combination route. They did have Leggett going up the sideline on a wheel route, and Artavis Scott broke open on the inside route. And if you're Mike Stoops in that Oklahoma defense, you're saying we don't want to give him anything, but we definitely don't want to give him a touchdown here before halftime. Wayne Golden, well, close to nine more. And keep in mind, Clemson won the toss and deferred, so they will get the ball to start the third quarter. So right now, Clemson trying to maintain momentum to go into the locker room and to come out of the locker room here in the Capital One Orange Bowl. I don't know how many times I've said second down and short for Clemson, but here's another one. Second down and a yard. Deshaun Watson's going to throw for it, and that's kind of a wasted down, actually, yeah. intended for Scott, incomplete. You know, we mentioned the, the absence of Deion Kane for the Clemson offense. We learned today somebody not playing for this Oklahoma defense, Charles Walker, one of their key defensive linemen, coming into the game, 10 tackles for loss and six sacks, out tonight with a concussion. And he's a real difference maker on their defensive front, so they're playing without him tonight as well. That's Jordan Evans now. This is Deshaun Watson all the way. He even keeps his hand on his blocker and now down on the sideline out at the 26-yard line. Wayne wow. Gallman led the way, even had his hand on his rear end, I think. Watch Gallman and watch the left guard, Eric McClain, their leader up front. A burying block on the cornerback, Jordan Thomas, and then the lead block. That's a counter play. You pull the guard and you also lead with the back. Over 100 for Deshaun Watson now. And picks up maybe a half yard on that one. That one looked like a little bit of a mistake. I don't know if Deshaun Watson missed the handoff or missed a read, but I don't think that's one he wanted to keep. Down to 245 remaining in the half. Six out of 13 throwing, but 104 and a touchdown on the ground. 
Closing now very close in on a thousand yard season rushing. Here's a throwback screen and it's dropped by Peak. And he was thinking about where he was going yeah. and he forgot to take the football. And they had a chance on this one. Oklahoma was coming with a blitz. Single coverage outside. And when you throw a screen against a blitz, if you just get one guy blocked, you get a big play. And Peak not able to make the catch. This would be a monumental stop for the Sooner defense if they can prevent a third down conversion here. Empty backfield. There'll be five guys in the pattern unless Deshaun runs this again. Striker at the top. He is going to run maybe at least to try to find a way to throw. Goes to the end zone and it's too far too deep. He got his hand on it. It is a stop for the Sooners. Zone defense, four man rush. Trying to keep everything in front. And excellent discipline by the Oklahoma defense, forcing the throw away by Watson. Well, this is going to be a long field goal attempt by Hugo. 43 yarder. He's hit from 47 this year. They try to tack three more on for Clemson. He'll go from 43 yards away. Kick out of the way. It's a beauty. Give it to him. Lead goes to six for the Clemson Tigers. 2.17 remaining in the half. It's a New Year's Day trifecta on ESPN. Coming up, Battle Frog Fiesta Bowl. Number eight, Notre Dame. Number seven, Ohio State. One o'clock Eastern. Tomorrow, then at five. Number six, Stanford. Number five, Iowa in the Rose Bowl game. Presented by Northwestern Mutual. And at 8.30, it's the All-State Sugar Bowl with number 16, Oklahoma State. Number 12, Ole Miss. You don't want to miss a second on ESPN on New Year's Day. Now, let's take a look at the strongest of the strong numbers. Brought to you by AT&T. <laughs> And uh, we saw this guy at the end of the year, and we were so impressed. We couldn't stand ourselves. We just kept saying, anything he can't do, Christian McCaffrey, the all-everything guy and one of the players of the year in college football, will be involved in that game tomorrow. Broke Barry Sanders' record for all-purpose yards with that uh, nearly 3,500 you just saw on the screen. So we got 2.17 left. Oklahoma has two timeouts. First time that Deshaun's rushed for a hundred and a half, but it's about the sixth time in the last seven games or so that he's done it this season. Eagles kick to the corner. Ross has to make the catch right in the corner at the goal line. It was an excellent kick as far as yeah. placement, and he still got out across the 20 with it. Well, the Clemson defense, after the opening drive, has settled down. When they rush Baker Mayfield, they rush with discipline. They have a spy keeping an eye on him. They keep in their lanes, and they send them to their help guys. They've really done a nice job of limiting the big plays. Coming into the game, Oklahoma's defense or offense was averaging seven yards per offensive play. So far in the first half, Clemson is holding them to 4.8. Clemson defense that had to replace eight starters from a year ago and for Brent Venables <laughs> doing just about the same thing they did a year ago. Hard to imagine. Eight starters, ten defensive players in NFL camps when preseason started. Baker Mayfield throws out in the flat to Samaj P. Ryan. Cuts back to the middle of the field. Got a first down and he's got more. Out across the 40-yard line. I think a lot of people thought he was going to run out of bounds after making that catch. He makes it a 19-yard catch and run. Well, a lot of time for Baker Mayfield. Two timeouts, just a little over two minutes to go. Clemson can't relax. Again, defensively, they've squeezed him here in the first half, but that was a big play for Oklahoma. First down at the 44. He looks right now, comes back left. He's going to just shovel it over to Pirine again. He'll get what he can, which is a couple, before he's run out of bounds. Austin Bryant with pressure on Baker Mayfield again Austin Bryant the young freshman in to replace Shaq Lawson Kind of learning on the fly tonight Sooners on the ball in a hurry at the 47 Clemson still shifting around defensively Mayfield 
Going to go deep down the middle. And it's caught at the 11 by number 11, D.D. Westbrook. Well, great job by Mayfield, knowing he's going to get hit. This ball is completed because it's underthrown. Tankersley is going to make the play if the ball is thrown down the field, but because it was underthrown, Westbrook was able to kind of get his body between the ball and the defender and use it as a shield and make the catch. First and 10 at the 11, a 42-yard pass play. Bench. There's no yardage penalty on that. That's their first warning. A warning on the Oklahoma bench at the end of the play. Charge timeout, Clemson. They're Bob, first. Bob Stoops is saying, I don't want one of you guys except me anywhere timeout. across the chalk. <laughs> uh, yeah, they've already seen one penalty called for that. And that's what Dabo's saying. How is theirs a warning and ours a penalty? Good point. Stay tuned to ESPN right after the half for the Buick halftime report. Don't forget Sage Steele and Ryan Seacrest will be in Times Square. Capital One Beach Bash from last night. They had a huge turnout there. And a halftime breakdown by the guys. It's all coming up. Buick halftime report. Sooners are uh, knocking on the door, trying to regain the lead here with 140 remaining in the half. It was interesting when we talked to Lincoln Riley about Baker Mayfield. One of the things he said is, we asked, you know, do you worry about a big game? Do you try to calm him down a little bit? He says, no, we found that the bigger the stage, the more fearless he is. This is a fearless quarterback. No one he's going to get hit, an unblocked defensive end, but he knows he has a chance for a play down the field, and we've seen Baker Mayfield play that way all season long. Let's see what Lincoln Riley has dialed up. Mayfield's three for three on this drive from the 11. Mayfield throws it out in the flat to Andrews, puts the brakes on. Touchdown, Oklahoma. <laughs> the Sooners have tied it up with the extra point upcoming. Austin Seibert for the point after, an all-important one at this point. Number four is back in front. Well, when you put a guy in motion, it's hard to double him, and it's hard to get press coverage on a guy. So they take Andrews, and they put him in motion. He's going to get picked up by an inside defender, but there's too much cushion. Because of the motion, they couldn't get closer coverage, and Baker Mayfield made the right read, and Andrews made the right reaction. And Mark Andrews has a ridiculous touchdown ratio on the amount of catches he has on the year. Yeah, they target him when they get in the red zone. They target him when they get third and fourth down. He makes big plays when he's down in that area. And that is a freshman record single season mark for receiving touchdowns by Mr. Andrews. Seventh on the year. Caps a 76-yard drive in just 43 seconds to get our second lead change and put OU back in front by one. This game's got the makings of what we thought, partner. Absolutely. Clemson only had one game this year where they trailed at halftime. That was Florida State. They were down 10 to 6. Came back to win 23 to 13. Our Davis Scott two yards deep, and he'll bring it out. Trying to get to the 20, won't quite get there. Stan Von Taylor made the stop on the special teams. Let's take a look at the Taco Bell student section, where Taco Bell and the college football playoff have provided 1,000 student tickets free of charge so the students could come down to Miami and cheer on their teams. Great crowd for the 82nd edition. Capital One Orange Bowl, perfect night, and a really fun game so far. Now you mentioned earlier in the game the turnover margin for Clemson minus two. That is so rare for a team to be undefeated and to be this in a game like this to have a negative turnover margin number. They cannot afford a turnover right here. 
And they'll just throw, and what a nice catch by Pete before he went out of bounds. In the last 20 years, every national championship team has been plus three or better on yeah. turnover margin. So Tigers are kind of beating the odds right now. Oklahoma plus 10 this year. That's been a big factor for their resurgence in the last seven games. Clemson's been able to overcome that with resiliency and toughness. Second down and six with a minute 24 to go. Watson standing in tall, fires over the middle, complete. And that's to Renfro. And that's going to be good for a first down. Renfro's kind of become a safety blanket when all else yeah. fails for Deshaun Watson. A former walk-on had to earn his stripes and really uh, endeared himself to this coaching staff. Not only was Dabo Sweeney a walk-on wide receiver at Alabama, but both coordinators, former walk-ons at Clemson as well. Isn't that amazing? Just over a minute to play. Striker coming out of blitz. Throw is complete at the 50. Peak almost broke it. First down, Tigers. Sharon Peak works on the opposite side, the short side of the field. He's a tall receiver. Perfect timing and throw on the little skinny post. At the 44, Watson, and that one's intended for Sharon Peak, and it got tipped in route by somebody in the secondary. Uh, That was Devontae Bond who got back there in coverage, got a piece of the football. So 17, 16, 50 seconds to go. As you look in from the DirecTV blimp, our air coverage brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Well, Clemson with two timeouts, facing second down and 10. Not in field goal range at this point, but enough time in those two timeouts opens up the whole field right here for Deshaun Watson. Even if they just got three, the momentum yep. would shift back to Absolutely. them going to the locker room. And they get the ball to come out. Right. Second down and 10. Watson. Well, that one was a mix-up. They wanted to throw a screen out to Artavis Scott. He had a couple of blockers out in front, but it was nowhere near the intended receiver. And it's third down and 10. Well, I think you're two down territory here if you're Clemson. This is their longest third down attempt of the night, believe it or not. Third down in the length of the sticks. OU fans really making some noise for their defense. Here comes Stryker off the edge again. Watson's going to take off. Needs 10. Got 10 and a half. Wow. I'll tell you what. He makes a nice read and a decision, but watch Goldman pick up the blitz of Stryker right here. That's the one block Watson needed. Get rid of Stryker, and then he sees a crease to run to the opposite side for the first down. At the 32-yard line of first down with 40 seconds left in quarter number two. Watson wanting to throw deep down the middle That's and incomplete. Yep. There comes the flag. Intended for Hopper. I this, think Frank Shannon's a guilty yeah, party. The safety came over the top to help on Scott, and the linebacker was trying to run underneath. Pass interference. Defense number 20. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Linebacker trying to run underneath on Hopper. And that's a mismatch. Wide receiver, linebacker. He's there in good position, just can't make the contact. Again, Clemson still has two timeouts. Bob Stoops again saying the ball was not catchable. Now it sets up the Tiger offense at the 17-yard line. Back in the red zone again. 35 seconds to go. They've got two timeouts. Trying to regain the lead. Watson running all the way. He got drilled this time after a short game. Probably use a timeout right here. There's the first one. Oklahoma ready to defend the quarterback Starts run on out. that play. Clemson. 28 so seconds. 30 second remaining. Timeout. 30 second timeout. One left for them. And on New Year's Day, you can ring in 
the new year with more college football. Number 13, Northwestern, and number 23, Tennessee, in the Outback Bowl at noon on ESPN2 at 1 o'clock over on ABC. It's the Buffalo Wild Wings Citrus Bowl. Jim Harbaugh's 14th-ranked Michigan club taking on Number 19, Florida, Jim McElwain. Capital One Bowl Mania continues. Both games streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. You know, we've seen the impact on the football game that Mark Andrews has made for Oklahoma. The big receiver, the matchup problem. We have not seen Jordan Leggett become a factor for this Clemson offense. This is the part of the field where that kind of a target, six foot five, 255 pounds, needs to be a factor for Deshaun Watson. They've targeted him three times, no receptions. They need him to step up and make a play. Came into the game with 34 as a second team All-American. And now he is over a thousand yards. Deshaun Watson, that is some kind of year. No wonder he was third in the Heisman balloting. From the 15, pump fake. Buys himself some time and throws it away. Somebody almost made a catch there in the end zone. Again, good discipline by the Oklahoma defense. They know they have the end zone to help them on the deep routes. Zone drops and then rushing the quarterback with discipline. Okay, here's the stop of the drive right now. If you're an Oklahoma fan, they're well aware try to gear up their fans down there in that corner of the end zone to make it difficult for Deshaun Watson. They took over, did the Tigers at their own 19 with a minute 34 left. This is the ninth play of the drive, but it's third and eight. Wouldn't be surprised to see a run here. Might be Watson taking off on a run on his own. Again, he's getting pressured. Lobs it to the end zone, and it is intercepted by Zach Sanchez. That's the stop they were looking for. Zach Sanchez has been a ball hawk all year. That's his seventh interception of the season. We talked about avoiding a turnover. He's trying to find Leggett, who's working on Sanchez. He's going to try to throw it up in the air for his tall receiver, but Sanchez is in perfect position to make a play. But in all honesty, that's a play Deshaun Watson should not have tried. They're in field goal range. They have a chance to seize momentum back and get the ball to start the third quarter, a throw that he should not have made. They'll get the ball to start the third quarter, but they won't be leading. Baker Mayfield's going to take a knee here to end the half. What a half it was. A lot of fireworks, a lot of strange plays, a lot of big plays. Number one and number four in a first half classic in the 82nd Capital One Orange Bowl. And the top-ranked team in the country trading, trailing rather by one as Holly's talking to their head coach. Well, Coach, a good drive there. What will you say to your quarterback, Deshaun Watson, about what he should have done on that last play? All right, he gave his guy a chance to make the play. didn't work out. But biggest thing is, is I think that's five good drives in a row. We just got to come away with touchdowns in the red zone. We, we've had too many field goals, so we just got to get a little better in the red zone. Hey, guys playing good. It's a heck of a ball game, just like you thought it would be, and we got a whole other half to play. What gave you the courage? What factors did you consider a guy? about that fake punt in a crucial moment. I just thought we needed to play and uh, felt like it would be there and it was a good momentum play for us. And, you know, like I said, it's it's a game of a few plays. That was a big one for us, but we just got to get a little better. And really, really disappointed in that last touchdown drive. They scored in a minute. Really poor job, you know, playing the ball in the air right there. But, hey, they're a good team. They're making plays. We've made plays. Uh, it's going to be a great second half. Thanks, Coach. Okay. With that Sanchez interception, only the second red zone turnover suffered by Clemson all year, and it cost some points. They trail at the break by one. Buick Halftime Report. It's coming up right after these messages.
welcome you back to the Capital One Orange Bowl. Just about set to start the third quarter. The top-ranked Clemson trailing the number four team in the semifinal playoff. 17-16, our score. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nestler along with Ty Blackledge. Clemson, number one team. Deshaun Watson, great on the ground, but when they got down in the red zone, Todd, they had opportunities. Yeah. They ended up with a, a touchdown, two field goals, and then that turnover at the end yeah. of the half. Yeah, that was critical. And, and credit Oklahoma's defense for stiffening up and getting the right play when they needed to. The one thing that concerns me looking at the stats from an Oklahoma standpoint, only 31 yards rushing in that first half on 20 carries. I would expect to see Oklahoma try to get some more balance. Clemson the better balance offensively in that first half. Mayfield connected 17 times to seven different receivers. So he saw it back and forth moments ago. Holly talked to Bob Stoops. Well, Coach, this has been a very exciting game back and forth, but some big plays you've given up to their running quarterback. How do you fix that in the second half? Yeah, we've gotten out of position. Uh, the plays we've practiced for two weeks, you got to stay in position. And, uh, you know, that and tackling. How do you get a little bit more rhythm in your offense? You finally found some on that last drive. How do you continue that? Yeah, hopefully we could get a little more run game to go with the ability to throw. That'll help. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. So while Clemson ended the second quarter with an end zone interception, at least with the last 13 seconds with that end zone interception, they do get the ball to start the third quarter, so they're going to have another opportunity right here to try to regain momentum and regain the lead. Hudson to kick Fuller and Artavis Scott are back inside the five. Second half. A half to go to see who's going to have an opportunity to play for the national championship. And Clemson will take a knee, will bring it out to the 25, and Deshaun Watson will take over. Again, he went over the 1,000-yard mark rushing in the first half. But as a passer, 9 of 22, and he missed on seven of his last ten passes in that first half. Well, I think what Oklahoma did to him a lot was flush him out of the pocket. A lot of zone coverage, not leaving their coverage areas and forcing him uh, to throw the ball away. Wayne Gallman with him in the backfield. And he'll get the carry. And this is what he did in the first half with a lot of success. First down on the first touch, pickup of 11. This Clemson offense, compared to a year ago, they were a better defensive team a year ago, but they're better offensively, not just because of Watson, but because of their ability to run the football. And that's part Gallman, and it's part the offensive line that has really come together that started the year. None of these guys up front were returning starters. Including a true freshman left tackle, who is where Goldman's running behind right now. Out to the 41-yard line. Great balance coming into the game. Clemson had scored 30 touchdowns in the air, 30 touchdowns on the ground, and in the top 25 in both of those categories as far as the country. Dalman got five more, second down and five. So he's had a good opening third quarter. Watson all day to throw. Now the pressure comes, and he gets it out to a safety valve, and it's Leggett finally. Getting a catch and close to a first down. I think he's got it. Matthew Romar was the guy who put some heat on number four. It's only a three-man rush going against six blockers, but Romar able to get in there and force Watson out, and Watson dumps it down to a safety valve. Out to the 46 with a first down. Gallman inside. And again, he keeps the legs driving. Yeah. He gets to midfield and a little bit more. I mean, you know, and the coaches told us they described him. Dabo Sweeney described him as a workhorse, a real grinder. That, that's what that run is. That's a picture of a grinder right there. A guy who's good, who runs stronger than maybe he looks. And when we talk to the Oklahoma coaches, Mike Stoops says, I think he's the most underrated player on yeah. their team. There's his numbers right now. And it's Artavis Scott picking up another first down near the 40-yard line. By the way, Gallman, with the runs he's had in the first half, passed Raymond Priester as the single-season rushing leader in Clemson history. They've had a lot of good backs at Clemson. Well, the other thing we're seeing Gallman do is pick up blitzes and pass protection, and that play on the reverse got a great block on the middle linebacker, Dominique Alexander. He's going to get a breather, and Zach Brooks is in a tailback. First down at the 39. 
play fake, quick throw out in the flat. Ray Ray McLeod, nice open field tackle. A really nice play by Stephen Parker. Last time we saw Oklahoma, Stephen Parker made the game-saving play on yeah. a two-point attempt by TCU. Just jumped straight up and got his hands on the football. That's a tough play, making a tackle like that in space on a quick wide receiver. Second and eight. Here's an option. We haven't seen much of that. The late pitch, and it's a first down, and it's a bunch more. Collision time at about the 17-yard line. Brooks and Ahmad Thomas. What a nice change of pace by Tony Elliott calling the option. Oklahoma has to stop the quarterback run. Devontae Bond takes the quarterback, but they're not disciplined on the pitch. And a little different wrinkle with the quarterback run gets Clemson a first down. And Ahmad Thomas got a mouthful of Brooks. And Ray Ray McLeod for the second time on this drive with a completion to pick up a four. We've so seen Clemson marching right down the field. We've seen quarterback draw. We've seen zone read. We've seen quarterback counter, and we've seen quarterback power. And that time we saw a lead option. Here they are, the red zone again. But like I said, a couple of field goals, a touchdown, and a turnover for their efforts, including those numbers. Passing the football down here for Deshaun. And with that, they keep it on the ground. They got it to the 15, and that's it. Nice play by Dominic Alexander. The junior out of Tulsa. Yeah, nice job by the guy in front of him, too. The defensive nose tackle absorbed two blockers, and that enabled the middle linebacker to scrape right into the hole and make a tackle without pressure. Well, a beautiful opening drive by Clemson. Can they continue? Third down and five. We'll find out. They need to get to the 10-yard line. That's Leggett in motion. Watson. Got it inside the 10 to Renfro. It's first and goal. Tigers at the four. You know, there are certain receivers that a quarterback feels really comfortable with because you know what you're going to get, you know where they're going to be, and they're going to make good, tough catches in traffic, and that's what Deshaun Watson feels with Renfro. You just feel Deshaun Watson on a quarterback draw here at the four-yard line. There is number four down inside the two. You talk about an almost perfect three minutes and 50 seconds to open the third quarter. Oklahoma's given up one touchdown down here, but this one's really close. 12th play of the drive from the one. Touchdown, Clemson. The Tigers are back in front. Wayne Gallman from a yard. Beautiful block by Tyrone Crowder, the right guard, to cap a perfect drive to start the third quarter for Clemson. They ended the second quarter on a bad note. They start the third quarter on a great note. Tell you what, the fact that Deshaun Watson ran the ball so much in the first half, Gallman looks fast and fresh. Hill goes point after is right down the middle, which is exactly where Wayne the train Gallman just ran to cap a 75 yard drive right down the middle. Top ranked Clemson's got the lead back. You want some more stars when we're done? We'll take you to Arlington with the Heisman Trophy winner, Derrick Henry. He'll be looking to eclipse the 2,000-yard mark early in the first quarter as Alabama, number two, Michigan State, number three, and the Goodyear Cotton Bowl follows our game here from Miami Gardens. Our third lead change, Clemson back in front, 23-17, after a 75-yard drive. And Watson had about half of that. Hugel to kick off. Alex Ross from a yard deep. Hasn't had a big one yet tonight, but he's had some solid ones out across the 20 again near the 22-yard line. We check in with Holly. Well, Clemson comes out and marches right down the field on this Oklahoma defense that's typically so stout. They did a good job preparing for this heat, trying to practice.
practice for three weeks in their indoor facility with the heat up high, but it's about 80 degrees down here on the field. It is hot and muggy, and now without some of their key depth, Charles Walker, who's out of defensive tackle with a concussion, Jordan Evans, their middle linebacker, who is also out with an injury. I just don't see the same pep in the step of these Sooners that we're used to seeing, guys. Well, that's why I think establishing their run game a little better here to start the third quarter will be important. Take some time off, let that defense rest a little bit more as well. He rides with Mayfield. And Mayfield on the keeper, doesn't get anything. In fact, he loses a yard. Run out of bounds by Kevin Dodd. See, different running styles between Mayfield and Watson. Watson mostly by design. Where Baker Mayfield hurts you as a runner is when things break down on a pass rush and they leave a lane and he scrambles or creates. You mentioned earlier they had doubled from the Texas game on what they did as a team rushing the football and they're not getting much at all as you just saw that graphic so far here early in the third quarter tonight 1.6 a carry. Blitz coming. P Ryan going down. Sometimes you blitz to get to the quarterback. Sometimes you blitz anticipating run. This was a run blitz and they outnumbered Oklahoma at the line of scrimmage. They outnumbered them. There weren't enough white shirts to block. And a beautiful play by Kevin Dodd coming in there as he well. He rides still down. DJ Reader, number 48, in there as well. He rides grabbing it. Looked like his left ankle, and he is in some serious discomfort. First time that Samaje has been stopped for a loss all night, and it might be a huge loss for the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll check on him when we come back. Oklahoma running back Samaje Pirine, their thousand yard rusher, has been helped off the sideline. He could put no weight at all on that left ankle. So that will mean it's Joe Mixon time. But guys, Joe Mixon was a little bit limited in that first half. He has come out of the locker room at the halftime with a heavily taped right leg. He was limping in several series in that first half. I asked Coach Duke to the half, hey, is Mixon okay? And he said, yes, we will find out right now. Well, it wasn't necessarily the tackle. It was a 325 pounds of DJ Reader that landed on the outside of that left ankle. A P run. So it's Joe's turn in the backfield, as Holly said, on third and 14. Play action. Mayfield's in trouble, and down he goes. And it's the same guy that started the play before. Dodd with a sack, the fourth of the night. Well, he beat the guard, Kasitati, and then the back couldn't help mixing in for his first play, not able to get enough and take enough steam out of Dodd, and Dodd making up for the absence of his partner, Shaq Lawson, with a huge sack on third down. Third straight negative play, and it sets Oklahoma back to where Seibert's got a kick from his own end zone, and this should give Artavis Scott maybe a chance at a return, or at least good field position. Well, kicks a mile high. Scott's going to fair catch it. Great kick. Yeah, it was. A low snap, too. He fielded a low snap in his own end zone and kicked a boomer. Still pretty good field position for Clemson with a six-point lead when we come back. The 2015 Capital One Orange Bowl, brought to you by the Capital One Quicksilver Card. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase every day. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Gatorade, fueling today, fueling the future. Some great shots from earlier this afternoon when we kicked off shortly after 4, and now is night. Time is set in in Miami Gardens. Our aerial coverage even prettier. Brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Deshaun Watson and the Clemson offense with a lead and the ball at their own 39. Gallman off the right side. Broke one tackle. Broke another. Wow, what a tough run by Gallman to the 45. 16 more yards. For number nine. Well, again, this offensive line just starting to control things. Watch the right tackle, Joe Gore. 73 does a beautiful job knocking out Devontae Bond and opening up a huge gap on the outside. Gallman again bounced off 
a collision and got another first down and took the helmet off Stephen Parker. Well, I made the comment because Watson ran so much in the first half, this guy looked like he has fresh legs and extra speed. And he's playing in a little different gear than anybody else right now. They move the ball to the 32 yard line in a hurry. Gallman and Watson in that backfield. The Georgia connection. One from Loganville, one from Gainesville. Now the option and the pitch, and Gallman dropped the ball. And I think it's going to go out of bounds before Oklahoma can cover it. Well, they got him once on the lead option. Oklahoma with an excellent correction. They got the quarterback and the pitch man, Dominique Alexander, because he was there so fast to defend the pitch. I think Gallman took his eye off the football. Or oh, Clemson the dodged field. one right there. The They're ruling on the field. You saw the hit by Alexander. And then not enough real estate yeah. for Charles Tapper to cover that ball before it went out of bounds on the far side of the field. One of the best things this Oklahoma defense has done this year, and that's really the biggest difference in this team, is their improved defense is disrupting and forcing turnovers. They forced 27 now after the interception in the first half. That would have been a huge one right there. Instead, it's second down and nine at the 31. Zach Brooks comes back in. He'll take the carry. Almost looked like a face mask. He got a yard. And it's going to bring up third down and long. Nice play by Charles Tapper. You know, you love when a, a senior plays his best football in his last year. That's what's happening with Charles Tapper. And even the last half of his first year, over the last five games of the year, seven sacks, three forced fumbles. A big play right there to bring up third and long. And almost a fumble recovery on the previous play. Third down and eight. To be a long field goal try if they don't pick up any yardage. Watson, pressure on the inside this time. Throws it away. Tapper again. What a series by Tapper. Once again, you flush him out to one sideline. You limit the rest of the field. He can only see one side. Tapper comes all the way inside on that stunt and then chases Watson to the sideline. And Deshaun has nowhere to go except to throw the football away. So Greg Hugel, who was perfect in ACC play this year, 17 out of 17. We mentioned earlier his career long is 47. Greg, that's what you're looking at right here. To try to match his career high and stretch Clemson's lead. The freshman Heigl. Did somebody call a timeout and everybody just quit on the play? He missed the kick. It's no good. It's no good, but Oklahoma's field position is good after the miss. Oklahoma just stood still and said, try to hit that one. He missed it wide right, still 23-17. Samaje so Piran trying to walk it off over there. They've retaped his ankle. Still 23-17 after that missed field goal. Sometimes what you don't do is good enough. Watch this field goal attempt. Oklahoma doesn't rush at all. They just say you've hit from 47 before. Try it again. Well, I think partly they also know they were burnt on a fake punt earlier in the game, and I think they said, you know what? We're not going to rush all out <laughs> on this and get burnt on a fake field goal. And now the offense with good field position to start this drive. Here's a flip to D.D. Westbrook, who was in the backfield. And D.D. Westbrook, look out. Oh, what a move. And a great open field tackle there. It could have been bigger. Tankersley made the stop on a pickup of 18. This one is a quick throw. It's a lateral. Injured player. And then D.D. Westbrook, just good open field, almost like a punt return. Yep. Making guys miss in space. An injured player, and it's from Oklahoma. It's either Mixon or Meade, I think. I think it's Mixon. I see a two on the jersey. We'll take an injury timeout and check on him when we come back. Well, the guy that's down is Joe Mixon right now, who was attempting to block on that play by Dede Westbrook. 
And at the end of the play, ran into Richard Yergin, both head on right there, and then landed on in the same spot, yeah. basically. Normally, the guy who makes that peel, black, peel back block has the advantage because the other guy doesn't see him, but you're going to a bigger athlete coming full speed, and uh, Joe Mixon took the worst of it. And Baker Mayfield going, oh, boy, we're running out of running backs, and this might become a passing game for me right now, not to mention everybody in the stadium concerned about the redshirt freshman out of Oakley, California, and Samaj so P. Ryan, they're trying to work on that left leg and that left ankle. Remember, he went out earlier injured. Those are the top two backs for the Sooners as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, they have examined thoroughly that left ankle of Samaj P. Ryan, and he's heavily taped. They put some extra padding around that that's extra sturdy. Then they let him try it out on the sideline. I saw them asking him to stand up on his tippy toes, put some weight on it. He kept grimacing at every point. But when he saw that Joe Mixon was down and is continuing to be down, he grabbed his helmet and ran out onto the field. He's asked his strength and conditioning coach, Jerry Schmidt, to stretch him out right now and get ready to play. He is going to try. I'm just glad to see Joe Mixon up. And walking off under his own power, whether we'll see him anymore tonight or not, yet to be seen. That would mean that Alex Ross might have to carry some more of the load, or maybe Dimitri Flowers, the fullback. It's Ross right now that's in the huddle. And those are pretty meager numbers compared to what the other two guys have done this year. Last seven games, 300 a pop. Tonight, 36 yards and a yard and a half a carry. And you got to factor sacks in there. Four quarterback sacks affect your rushing yardage, but even without that, it has not been a typical Oklahoma running game tonight. Well, the top Sooners back in there, bad wheel and all. Samaj P. Ryan in the backfield. They give it to him to test the ankle and test the Clemson defense, and he passes the test. Pick up a five. Yeah, I think he'll be fine running the downhill straight ahead plays. It's if he has to try to cut or move laterally that he might have some problem. Seven minutes remaining third quarter. Clemson by six. Blitz coming off the corner as Mayfield goes the other way and a streak on the sideline. Broken up incomplete intended for Westbrook. There are no flags. Tankersley there with him stride for stride. Tankers Lee is one of three guys that Brent Venable said was an unknown coming into the year. Did not play with a lot of confidence coming into this season, and they thought if he plays well, we got a chance. We know we've got Alexander on the other side. Oklahoma fans wanting interference. Tankers Lee didn't get his head around quickly. He got a hand on the ball, but he didn't turn to find the football. That's what Bob Stoops, Bob Stoops. Third down and five. Shepard in motion. Mayfield pumps, goes out to Sterling Shepard with a first down. Sterling Shepard came into this game number three in about every category as far as all-time receivers in Oklahoma history. Well, you've got the matchup guy in there, Andrews. He's in the slot. Shepard is outside of him right now. Mayfield on first down comes back to the near side to Shepard again and this time it's incomplete covered over there by Mackenzie Alexander Don't forget the Goodyear Cotton Bowl follows us number two Michigan State uh, number three Michigan State I beg your pardon and number two Alabama right here number one's leading number four but it's by only six Second down and 10 from the 39. Fakes it to P. Ryan, quickly throws to Shepard, kept his balance. He's short of the first down, but he did pick up seven. And they get to the line in a hurry here on third down. Third down, a short three, throw out in the flat. Quick is not quick enough. Now he danced too much. If he just turns his head upfield and runs, he picks up that first down. But he danced around and it allowed the Clemson defense to pursue, and Ryan Carter makes the play. Makai quick, his first catch, but there's what Todd was talking about, and it brings up fourth down, and Oklahoma's going for it. Again, P. Ryan, I think, is okay running straight ahead. He's got Dimitri Flowers behind in front of him. Play of the game so far, fourth and one. 
Changing it at the line, Lincoln Ryan. And the direct snap to P. Ryan. He runs over to a wall and he doesn't make it. Kendall Joseph was the first guy got help from his friends. The first time we've seen a direct snap tonight. Watch the freshman. He gets in there and makes the first contact. He comes on an inside stun. Austin Bryant makes the first contact on P. Ryan, and then he's got teammates there to clean it up. Again, the inability of Oklahoma to get their ground game going in this ball game yeah. is the story. Both teams wanted to have balance in their offense. Clemson has had it. Oklahoma has not had it. So Clemson takes over on downs at its own 30-yard line. They've got the fresh back, and here he goes again. Wayne Goldman all the way to midfield. Devontae Bond brought him down, but barely. 21 more yards. This is just a missed tackle. There's an unblocked guy right here. And he just doesn't make the tackle on Goldman. And that's Dominique Alexander, their best tackler from the linebacker position. At the 49, quick throw out in the flat to Renfro. Spins his way, spins his way twice. Inside the 45, a pickup of six. And that's Clemson that's going as fast as OU was on that last drive. Under five minutes in the third quarter. Deshaun Watson wanting to throw, going deep. Man out there just overshot Sharon Peak. We got a flag down. You know what we haven't had tonight? A holding call. Yeah. Well, this was thrown as either offsides. Offside. Yep, that's what we're going to have. Defense number 10. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. So on second down and four, the five yards takes it for a first down. And I think Clemson feeling a little fatigue in the Oklahoma defense. That's why the up-tempo, and even on that play, they didn't complete it, but Peak ran right by Jordan Thomas and was open, if not for the overthrow. A lot of plays in their drives tonight. This is the quarterback behind his tailback again. This one doesn't gain as much as the last one did when they ran that play. Pick up a three. Bob Stoops talked about being in the right position. They know the plays are coming. And that time they maintain good position, good discipline, and stop Watson for a very short game. Second down at seven at the 35. Renfro in the slot. Watson rolling to that right side and throws on the run, and he got right through down the sideline. Touchdown. There's the security blanket again. That gives Clemson a little more security. 29-17. The difference between this play and plays we've seen through the game Deshaun Watson was not flushed out of the pocket and throwing on the run. This was by design moving him out of the pocket. He had a timed up route with his receiver Renfro and Stephen Parker, the safety, went for the interception and missed on the gamble. He'll go in for the point after. It's good. Renfro with his third touchdown catch of the year. As we take a look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Well, they're going to move Deshaun Watson by design. Renfro is going to run the out route against the safety, Stephen Parker. Parker's going to undercut it, go for the interception. If you go for it, you better get your hands on the football because there's nothing behind you. And Clemson comes away with the touchdown. Tony Elliott said about number 13, he might have the best football knowledge of anybody on our team. He knew what to do there, didn't he? 70-yard drive, four plays, 35-yard touchdown pass. It's 30-17, to 17, Tigers.
Clemson's offense starting to look like the Clemson offense we saw through 13 weeks this season. Well, it's balance. I mean, you know, the passing game started slow, but the quarterback run was what they had going. And then Gallman started to get involved, and now that opens up the throw game for Deshaun Watson. It's all about offensive balance, and Clemson kind of has the game where they want it right now offensively. They've scored 14 points in the last six minutes and 44 seconds of clock time. Alex Ross been a busy kick returner and dropped that one. Now here's a point that we discussed all week about Oklahoma and their defense. Their defense is much better than they were a year ago. Much better, especially pass defense. And down the stretch, they had key wins against Baylor, TCU, and Oklahoma State. But in all three of those games, they did not face the starting quarterback. Right. The starting quarterbacks were injured in those three games. They have not played a quarterback the caliber of Deshaun Watson all season. It's showing up right now as they trail by a couple of scores coming up after the game stay tuned for the capital one orange bowl mvp and trophy presentations clemson with a 13 point lead they're 19 minutes and seven seconds away for playing for the national championship but we got a long way to go and we got a lot of baker mayfield left Mayfield throws nice throw and catch out to Jarvis Baxter first down shooters Well, this is the, this is the kind of situation Baker Mayfield the way he plays his personality his charisma He wants to be right there where he is right now plays with a chip on his shoulder says you want to put the game on my shoulders That's okay. That's where I want it to be pick up a 17 out to the 42 Quick play fake pump and go on the sideline and incomplete. That was intended again for Jarvis Baxter. Good coverage by TJ Green. They had that one big pass play, but there has not been a lot of explosion in the receiving core tonight for Oklahoma so far. You just keep waiting for that one big one to Sterling Shepard. Second down to 10. Clemson showing blitz. They're bringing blitz. Mayfield near sideline overshot. Deron Neal by quite a bit. It's a hard throw for any quarterback. Left hash mark throwing to the right sideline. And particularly under duress and inside pressure on a quarterback who's a little bit over six foot. Now that's a tough throw to make. Sideline warning. Clemson fence. There's no yardage penalty on that. That's their first sideline warning. First warning. I thought they had a penalty on it already, didn't they? Yeah, it's a whole different set of rules, though. Oh, if there's okay. contact or if you're just standing <laughs> in the wrong area. So they were standing in the wrong area on that time. Well, we'll push them back. And that's what their defense is hoping to do versus Oklahoma's offense on third and ten. Mayfield pressure coming got away from one got away from two and now he's going to do it with his legs and he's got a first down the magic of Baker Mayfield big first down run see this is where he hurts you as a runner very different than Deshaun Watson his ability to extend plays now he's going to pick up a block from Samaje P. Ryan as he takes off he runs an outlet receiver, but once he sees his quarterback running, he gets a nice block on Bullware for some extra yards. Up to the 40-yard line of Clemson. Blitz off the corner. Mayfield's going that way with the ball and overshot everybody. It was yeah. Micaiah Quick, his intended receiver. J. Ron Curse. Came flying in there from the secondaries. We check in with Holly. Well, the medical staff for Oklahoma has examined Joe Mixon. They've been going down the back of his neck, asking him if he has pain. He says no. He wants to get back in and play, but it doesn't look likely at this point, guys. It looks like he was really out for a while or, or may have even lost consciousness there. They're being very cautious with Joe Mixon. Probably won't return. And with that, it's P. Ryan in the backfield for Oklahoma all by himself. Mayfield, slant, tipped, intercepted by B.J. Goodson, the middle linebacker. Well, Goodson played this just perfectly, reading the quarterback's eyes. Well, we have a... Uh...
holding offense number 78. Penalties declined. It's off the play. Interception. First down, Clemson. B.J. Goodson, we already talked about. He was one of the unknowns. He's right here. When you're in zone defense, your eyes are on the quarterback, not on a particular receiver. Watch Goodson just read the quarterback and move with his eyes right into the throwing lane and gets the interception. B.J.'s second interception of the season and the first suffered by Mayfield in his last 96 passes. Oh, a little deflected also at the line of scrimmage. Clemson takes over at the 29. Only the sixth interception of the season for Baker Mayfield. Gallman just keeps spinning his way for positive yardage. Four more for Wayne Gallman. And he's over 100. So is Deshaun Watson. So that combination has fueled the Clemson offense so far tonight. Second and six. And now Gallman will empty the Clemson backfield. Quick throw or quarterback draw when they go empty. Stryker's going to backpedal. He thought about blitzing. And now they bring Watson down. Dominique Alexander's had a big game. Another tackle. You know, the first seven games of the year, Deshaun Watson coming off that reconstructed knee surgery only averaged nine carries a game for 47 yards. Then the last six games, his carries went up to almost 17 a game and close to 100 yards a game. And today, he's right at 16 carries. Co-offensive coordinator Tony Elliott told us yesterday we wanted to ease him back in until we could see some of the old Deshaun. And then we started cutting him loose, and he's cutting loose tonight. Gonna be short of the first down here, I think. He took a shot there, too. He did. Charles Tapper in there first. Ahmad Thomas coming from a safety position. I think he's short by a yard. Or maybe not quite a yard. Alexander and Watson had a little discussion. There's some nice sportsmanship yep. between those three guys. Allman, Watson, Alexander. And it's fourth down, and they'll have to punt. Well, I, I don't know. I shouldn't say they have to punt. <laughs> I don't think they'd do that again in their own no. territory, but that's Clemson's first three and out of the night. Sterling Shepard on uh, the receiving end is going to call a fair catch back around the 15 yard line. We got a quick moment here. Let's go to Sage Steele in Times Square. Sage. Thanks, Brad. As you notice, I'm inside our studios here in Times Square. Musical acts like Carrie Underwood, Luke Bryan, Wiz Khalifa, Demi Lovato, they're crazy. They're outside warming up for everything that begins 8 o'clock Eastern time over on ABC. Can't wait. Back to you, Brad. All right, we'll be watching Dick Clock's Rockin' New Year's Eve with Ryan Seacrest, Sage, and the rest of the gang tonight on ABC. Down down to 2016. we got about five hours left. Not quite. We have... A minute 12 left in the third quarter. Clemson has 16 minutes and 12 seconds for a trip to Glendale. But Oklahoma's got other thoughts, still only trailing by two scores. We're starting field position for him, and P. Ryan got about three. They have not scored today in the third quarter. The only other time they didn't do that was in Tennessee in week two, and we saw what they did in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So we know what can happen in 15 minutes with this offense. Mayfield, sideline, just overshot his intended receiver, Westbrook again. What do you got, Holly? Well, after that last interception, usually people are going over to console Baker Mayfield, but not in this case. Their right tackle, Drew Samia, was beside himself for getting blown up and causing the pressure that led to that interception. The Ty Darlington, the senator, they call him, went over in his face and said, hey, we need you right now. Baker Mayfield jumped in and said, look, I promise you, we're going to come back and win this game. It's Mayfield trying to get his offense back together and get some rhythm right now. He's got to have to do some bacon here. He's missed his last five passes, third down and seven. Here comes a blitz. Mayfield flushed. Probably going to have a holding call. Oh, and man, did he get drilled by Bowler and company on the far sideline. See, what Clemson's defense has been able to do, part by design and part by injury, 
is make this offense one-dimensional. As explosive as they have been in the last seven games, they did it by running the football Holding. and passing. Offense number 56. Penalties decline. Brings up fourth down. Darlington right over the middle, working against Carlos Watkins. That's the fifth sack of the night. And now Oklahoma again putting near its own goal line. Seibert. Fair catch called for at the 49 by Octavius Scott with a 13-point lead. And great field position. Clemson's got the football back with 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. And don't forget, after Michigan State and Alabama, which follows us, stick around for Sports Center at night with Scott Van Pelt. Scott will break down both semifinal games for you, preview the national championship matchup, because we'll know who's in it by then. You're going to ring in the new year with Sports Center at night after Michigan State and Alabama on ESPN. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Right now, Baker Mayfield would like to find an app to get the Oklahoma offense some points. This guy has been able to tonight. Deshaun Watson, the first team All-American, Davey O'Brien winning quarterback of the Clemson Tigers. Wayne Goldman broke one tackle, not the second one, though. It's Eric Stryker who brings him down for a loss of five. Big play right there because Oklahoma's defense has not been able to create very many negative yardage plays, particularly on first down. And, and this Clemson offense has gained momentum the longer the game has gone on. So that was a huge play on first down by Stryker to set him behind the chains to end the third quarter. Oklahoma has 15 minutes to do something about a 13-point deficit. Clemson's 15 minutes away for a trip to the national championship. Fourth quarter coming up. There's obvious fatigue. Their offense, the last two possessions, only 57 seconds and 44 seconds. They've got to make a stand right here. Second down at 15 to open the quarter. Deshaun Watson rolls, throws, going deep. Redfro's out there and almost made a one-handed catch and a flag on Stephen Parker. Well... There wasn't a ton of contact, but the fact that Stephen Parker never turned his head to look back for the football. Now, Bob Stoops was arguing there was a play on his sideline that was similar. Number 10, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's going to move the line of scrimmage all the way to the OU 40. It's single coverage on a deep route, and it's not because of the contact as much as it is that Stephen Parker never turned around to find the football. So Clemson right back in Sooner land at the 40 with the first down. See if we get more of Wayne Goldman. who's had a sensational night. Six more for Goldman. You know, and we talked about the improvement of this Oklahoma defense, and it's it's for real. They played at a much higher level on all three levels of their defense, but that was the 74th play of the game right now that their defense has had to be on the field for. And so, you know, Clemson is on pace to run over 100 plays. It's a hot night here in Florida. That takes its toll on a defense that's already missing a couple key guys because of injury. Charles Walker, who didn't play because of concussion. Jordan Evans, a middle linebacker, out. And here comes more of the Wayne train. First down, Clemson. And there's nothing that takes it out of you faster than a running game. When they come right at you and punch you right in the gut with an offensive line firing off the ball and a guy running like Gallman, that even takes it out of you more than pass rushing. Gallman had a decent season last year, but he's been asked numerous times why the major improvement this year and Davo Sweeney says maturity he just grew up and man he is growing on you tonight unless you're an Oklahoma fan Deshaun Watson trying to spin away from the tackle of Parker and he won't be able to nice play by Parker 
The clock becoming the enemy, even though we're just early in the fourth quarter. Any kind of Clemson points here, and it becomes a three-score game. Second down to nine. At the 26. Watson going to keep this one. Unless he throws late, he's heading to the sideline to get what he can. Went out at about the 21. Maybe even the 20, which is three yards shy of the first down. Third down and the biggest three of the night if you're an Oklahoma fan. Clemson six for 14 right now on third down. They've had a lot of third and shorts, and normally when it's been third and short, it's been Deshaun Watson calling his own number and running the football. There's the two guys that have both rushed for well over 100 yards tonight. Number nine and number four, Goldman and Watson. I think they're going to run the clock down and use a timeout. Looks like it. Give everybody a little breather. With 12 minutes and 37 seconds remaining is when the timeout comes. 30-17, top-ranked Clemson. Connor Cook, 34 wins as the starting quarterback for Sparty. Number three, Michigan State. Number two, Alabama. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl follows us from Arlington. Here we've still got 12-37 remaining in this first playoff semifinal in the Capital One Orange Bowl. Clemson 30, Oklahoma 17. Biggest third down of the night upcoming right here. Fifth time that Clemson has been third down and three or less. Again, the quarterback run, a big part of their third down package. Jordan Leggett, the tight end in motion. Watson draw play. Gallman broke one tackle, and now he's into the secondary. Tripped himself up, or he might have scored. First down, Clemson. Well, when you start seeing some missed tackles, here's a missed tackle by Stephen Parker. Again, it's fatigue. That's 77 offensive plays now Clemson has run. There's still 12 minutes and 20 seconds left in the ball game. 290 on the ground with as a school record, and there's been a lot of bowl games that Clemson's run the football a lot. In the red zone again. Watson fakes the run. Now he will run. Find some room back to the left side. Inside the 10. Oh, what a block on Stryker as he got to the 7. And that block was Artavis Scott, the wide receiver, but maybe yep. it was in the back. That's what the officials are having a confab about. There is no foul on the play for the illegal block. Second down. And that brings that reaction from the Clemson Tiger wide receiver. Well, Deshaun Watson is looking to throw back on the roll. It wasn't there, and when he takes off, Artavis Scott's going to come from the top of the screen. I think Jermon Hopper was wide open, but he didn't see him. And at the end of the play, there's the collision between Artavis Scott and Eric Stryker. The flag's picked up. Three straight runs for Clemson. Second down and four. Here comes another run, and it's Goldman, and he's going to have a first down at the three. Clock winding down to 11.27. As the helmet came off of Stephen Parker, I think, unless he was allowed to take it off, I'm not sure. Helmet came off with number 10, Oklahoma. He has to go out for one play. Maybe he took it off himself. I don't know. He's got a lot of humidity underneath that, uh, that shield. Can't see. Needs windshield wipers on the inside. They were short of the uh, first down, but it's third down and less than one. Quite a bit less than one. Goldman, touchdown. His second of the night from four yards out. 
Just power running. Power running and power blocking up front. Joe Gore, the right tackle. Stanton, Seckinger, the tight end on that side. And then Gallman just runs through the arm tackle of Stryker. If you'd have told me before this started that Clemson would run for over 300 yards against Oklahoma's defense tonight, I would not have believed you. Extra point is good. 50-yard drive, nine plays, just under five minutes. The man they call the Wayne Train for the second time tonight, pulling out of the station and pulling in the end zone. Clemson with a 20-point lead. The 2015 Capital One Orange Bowl. Brought to you by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles you can use on any airline, anytime. Cadillac. Taco Bell's Crunchwrap Sliders. Four full-size flavors, just a buck each. And AT&T, mobilizing your world. Only the third time in Orange Bowl history that two players from the same team have rushed individually for over 100 yards how about those numbers for those two guys well they did it in their last game too in the acc championship game they both ran for over 100 and clemson is just in full grind mode right now offensively ever since the touchdown pass from watson to renfro clemson has run it 12 straight times right like a 16 game winning streak Looking to win their fourth straight bowl game, but more importantly, a 17th straight win would send them to the national championship game. They're within 1048 right now. Oklahoma will bring it out to the 25 yard line. If it's on ESPN, it's streaming live on the ESPN app, which means you can take us with you wherever you want to go on your phone or your tablet. Download the ESPN app to start live streaming our game right now. We had to use that all week here because yeah. we spent 80% of our time in Florida in traffic. <laughs> trying to get from one function to the next. Now Baker Mayfield to bring his team out again. You know, he's had a good night throwing the football. 21 to 34, 259 yards and a touchdown. They just have had no running game. There's been some sacks, and they have not been able to run the ball well, so they've been a very one-dimensional team. They need some explosive plays now. They're going to try and end around here. They got it to Sterling Shepard. He's got his quarterback blocking in front of him, and he cartwheels to the 30 on the hit by T.J. Green. Well, it looked fun, but it only picked up five yards. Again, there has not really been a long ball to Sterling Shepard tonight from Baker Mayfield, and credit Clemson's defense for that. P. Ryan wants to get the first down and does, and again, he's playing on a bad ankle, and he drags, yeah. and he might not be getting up again. Yeah, the way he reacted at the end of that play made it look like he tweaked it again. For injured player. And Carlos Watkins, another 300-pounder, not only making the tackle, but also landing on his leg again yeah, and uh, turned right the other way this time. Yeah, he's out there playing on guts and determination, obviously not 100%. And uh... and the first time he got hit on the outside of the ankle, that one had turned the other direction. We'll step away with an injury here. We've still got 10 minutes to play, but it's amazing how this is following Clemson's season. They average 38 and a half points a game. They give up 20. Right now, they're leading 37 to 17. And I think Samaj P. Ryan's night has got to be over now after yeah. injuring his left ankle for the second time tonight. Was helped off the field, and I'm sure that's probably it. And again, as Todd said, he was playing on guts, and because his team needed him, or maybe he wouldn't have been out there anyway. Alex Ross in a tailback. But it's more of what Baker Mayfield in the passing game needs to do. And that one is caught. Going to be close to a first down. Not sure if it is. But a pickup of nine.
Nice throw right on the sideline. Westbrook working the, the chalk. Westbrook's had a really nice game. Second down and one. Mayfield, quick throw, complete to the 49. First down, Sterling Shepard. You know, now we've seen both P. Ryan and Mixon get hurt in this Oklahoma offense. And, you know, not only do you lose two great players, but you, you, you lose the best offensive formation down the stretch that you've had when the two of them were on the field together. And uh, really affected the Oklahoma run game effort tonight. Alex Ross took it into Clemson territory for a first down before he was run back. I think Alex Ross had a shoe problem. He had to come out and get that fixed. So they're going to put in flowers. Yep. The utility guy because he's got to get his cleat back on. Baker Mayfield is trying to help him with it, but he's got other business, like playing quarterback. And here he is to throw if he can get it away. Got away from Dodd. Still scanning the field. And he throws a strike, and it's a first down and then some. Yeah, that's vintage Baker Mayfield right there. That's what he's done ever since that Tennessee game that we saw him extending plays Keeping plays alive when there's nothing there He's he's elusive and he's strong when you try to tackle him high He shakes off tacklers because he's got great strength Mayfield Deep sideline on the right side. Shepard, a little miscommunication, I think, about where they were going with that ball. And now Mackenzie Alexander's down. I don't know if it's a cramp or if he pulled a hamstring. Time but for injured player. He hit the deck as soon as he was back there in coverage. He's trying to run it off. I think that would indicate that he's cramping up. He's had a good game. What was it that Brent Venable said when he came out of <laughs> mom's womb? He was he, he was, was a just a cornerback. Yeah. <laughs> he knew how to play corner. Some Don't guys hear. some guys have to work harder at it. He's going to be really good someday. He's only a sophomore. Second down at 10. At the Clemson 32. Oklahoma trying to make something happen here with 840 to go to keep it a ball game. I'd go right after his replacement if I was Baker Mayfield. Empty set. Mayfield comes the other way to Westbrook. Flags all over the place. Looked like Clemson was offside to start with, and I don't know what the other flag was about, unless they were drawn off with a false start. Offside. Defense number 49. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Richard Yergin just lined up offside. I don't think he didn't jump. Well, he did jump. He did both. He did both. He was <laughs> lined up off and jumped off. <laughs> Give him a 10-yard penalty. <laughs> so second and five at the 27 now. Oklahoma needs a quick strike. They fake the draw. Mayfield goes complete to Shepard. And he's got a first down at the 20. Well, when we saw this team play in Knoxville, they were down 17 in the fourth quarter. They're down a few more than that in this fourth quarter. But it's not unprecedented for them, especially with this guy pulling the trigger. Right at the edge of the red zone with eight minutes to go. And down by 20 this time. Three wide outs to Baker Mayfield's right. He has to scramble that way. And throws complete to Neal. I don't even know how he tucked that one in there. Great play. The ability to extend plays and throw accurately while under such duress is what makes Baker Mayfield so special. The receivers have gotten used to him. They know how to move with him when he scrambles and, and uncover into open areas. First and goal for the Sooners at the five. Mayfield scrambling around again, throws on the run, tipped and intercepted by Bowler. The linebacker ought to enter. 
Pierce in South Carolina, who said, I was born to be a Clemson Tiger, maybe just took the last sooner chance away. Well, he had a guy open in the back corner, but Bullware playing zone, read his eyes. Last year in the bowl game, Bullware returned an interception for a touchdown. This time, he gets an interception that might secure the win for the Tigers. We're back at the Capital One Orange Bowl in Miami Gardens, Florida, where it's 37-17. And to add, in this case, injury to insult, Baker Mayfield threw the interception, trying to make the tackle on uh, Bullware, and Bullware's knee right on the neck yeah. of the Sooner quarterback, and he is injured. They've been looking at him on the sideline. Well, yeah, that that's an unfortunate play for Baker, obviously. I mean, as a quarterback, you throw an interception, you want to go over there and make a tackle. Didn't expect Bullware to jump at the end of that play. Yeah. So. You know, we did the TCU game earlier in the season, and he took a hard hit in the second quarter of that game, came back and finished the half, and then was determined in the locker room, starting to have some concussion-like symptoms, and they held him out the rest of the game. I'd be very surprised if he comes back into this one. Yeah, he's one tough dude, that's for sure. Cody Thomas is number 14 that we just showed you on the sideline over there. He would be the guy that would come in at quarterback of Oklahoma and get the ball back. But Clemson, normally a hurry-up spread offense, and they're not hurrying anything right now. They're going to use all of that clock before they snap the ball on second down and eight, just inside their own 13-yard line. And Wayne Gallman. Ripped down by Charles Tapper as we check in with Holly. Looking ahead for Baker Mayfield, he is eligible to return to Oklahoma next year, but he's trying to get back his third year of eligibility because he walked on at Texas Tech and left. Texas Tech did not release him from his scholarship. Oklahoma has appealed that. It is not an NCAA rule, but it is a Big 12 rule. They have appealed it with the faculty representatives who have denied it on a 9-1 to -one vote, but they vowed that they will keep fighting. Joe Castiglione, the OU athletic director and their compliance director said anytime we get new information we're going to continue to fight for Baker Mayfield to get that year back. It's none of my business but I don't see how you can walk on and then transfer and walk on again and they have any business in saying he can't do that. Yeah. Gallman first down. <laughs> Big night for the 6 one 215 pound sophomore on Loganville Georgia. I mentioned earlier the Clemson folks, they sit around, and the Sean Watson's from Gainesville, Georgia, which is, what, about 20 minutes from Athens? And they were like, how come he didn't become a Georgia Bulldog? Because they have red and black everywhere in Gainesville, Georgia. Well, they're, they're wearing orange and purple now because yeah. um, the guys sit around at the Long Street Cafe, and they all they talk about is Deshaun Watson, yeah. the, the former Red Elephant of Gainesville High School. Well, you've got Watson, you got Gallman, but this... This offensive line for Clemson is as good as I've seen them have. And, and all new starters to begin this year. That's the most amazing thing about this offensive line group. Coming into the season, only Ryan Norton was a returning starter. He had started at center. Offense, number 63. Five-yard penalty. We play first down. It started at center in 2013 and 14, and then he got hurt early. And so all these guys were brand new full-time starters. This guy, a true freshman right yep. out of high school, enrolled early, but a true freshman. Eric McLean, the leader. Now, they're all, except one, Cleve and Shaven there, but they call themselves the Beard Gang. We saw them at the banquet. <laughs> they got some nasty-looking beards <laughs> they going do. on. But they have played and transformed, I think, this team. The, the culture, the offensive line room, and what they've done has really changed this football team. Anytime you start a true freshman at left tackle and he holds his own without getting a lot of help on chip blocks and all that, you've you found a gem, and that's what Mitch Hyatt is at the, the left tackle spot. And he probably wouldn't even be a Clemson Tiger had it not been for his uncle. Dan Benish was an all-ACC defensive lineman, went out to play with the Atlanta Falcons for a lot of years. When he was recruited, he was going to Ohio State. Yeah, he was an Ohio guy. Yeah, and... Uh, Woody Hayes got fired, and he showed up for his recruiting trip, and they said, we don't have a ticket for you. So he got out of there, didn't go his visit, and decided to go to Clemson and became an all-ACC performer. And the long story short, it's Mitch is his nephew. And so after his uncle played there, he said, I think I can do this too. Dan Benish and I played together in the North-South All-Star team you? in Ohio. You didn't yeah. tell me that one. 
And Stryker makes another tackle. Loss of a couple. Let's go to Holly. Well, an inspiring story about that offensive line is Jake Yermo, their center. He was about 363 pounds, barely playing last year, and actually quit the team. He went home. He went through some substance abuse counseling. He was battling deep depression, but he's gotten his life back together. He is the life of this team. He continually turns around to Sean Watson and says, hey, I love you, man, and I need you to say it back to me that you love me too. <laughs> but I really admire him for seeking help when he needed to with that substance abuse. He has come back a much leaner man, a productive member of this football team, and a, a real inspiration. Yeah. I think a big part of his rehab physically, emotionally, and mentally was chopping wood, too, if I remember reading that correctly. And I think he still <laughs> does it out. on a pretty regular Clemson. basis. They're second of the half. Clemson takes its second time out with 341 remaining. And they're going to go on to play whoever wins our second game of the night, and it's a big one. Alabama is not satisfied. They won't be happy unless they win the national championship. Chasing a dream has been what Mark D'Antonio has said all season long. It's going to come down to the end. It's hard-nosed, hard-fought football, and it's going to be close. That's what follows us. We've got one team about ready to slide over there into the matchup for January 11th. Clemson will be the first one in three minutes and 41 seconds from now, barring some sort of Oklahoma miracle. And for the Tigers, they'll go to 14-0, and, and they'll have a chance to be the only team ever to go to 15-0. and This would be their 17th straight win dating back to last year. Deshaun Watson hesitates, wait for his blockers, and only got about a yard. Dominic Alexander brings him down. Oklahoma has three timeouts remaining. That's 18 straight running plays, and now it'll be a punt upcoming. Well, and you wonder also if that's the last we'll see of Deshaun Foster or Deshaun Watson tonight. Yeah. It's not like they play next week or a week from now. If they advance to the championship game, they've got 11 days to rest, recover, get a couple days off, and then start your normal game prep. Sterling Shepard waiting on the punt. Has to call for a fair catch. And I bet he wishes he hadn't had a little bit of room to return that one. Holly? Well, guys, you remember back in the first, first quarter, Shaq Lawson, the great defensive end for Clemson. After some big plays, he was getting after Baker Mayfield. He is kind of the heart and soul of this defense. He came out after a sack with an injury to his left knee. He has not returned to this game, but he is now out of uniform. He was kind of standing outside the coach's box. So I said, hey, are you going to be able to come back and play next week? If you guys could go and win this game, he said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> we hope so for him. He's a special player. As Todd said earlier, took over for Vic Beasley, who was the number one draft choice of the Falcons. Cody Thomas in a quarterback. So Baker Mayfield season is over as well. It was a splendid one to watch. And he'll be a blast to watch again next year for Oklahoma. As they'll have a good returning nucleus to this team that's going to be 11 and 2 to finish the season. Now, 248 yard difference. Down the seam, it's a one hopper intended for Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard's Oklahoma career will end here tonight, too, and he's been a special young man. Of course, his dad, who wore the same number, played for the Sooners, and passed away when Sterling was only six years old. So he has remembrances, but uh, everybody else tells him how good a player his dad was, and he was. And he lived up to that number three all the way through his career. Third down, 13. And again, down the middle, there's Sterling Shepard at midfield. A great career. I think the line jocks called that incomplete. I guess maybe he did. There's his dad, 83 to 86. And 
a special moment on the final senior night. Brian Bosworth presenting him with a Sooners Illustrated magazine with all the signatures of the guys from the 85 team, that whole championship team. And you saw his reaction with his mom and his sisters there. He'll go on and play some more. Oh, yeah. Wow. Nice kick. Fair catch. Back around the 17 yard line with 2.13 remaining. 42 yard punt. Well, 34 years ago, the guys in orange won it all. They did it in the Orange Bowl. And now in 2015, they're going to get the chance to play for all the marbles with a win in the Orange Bowl. Uh, take a look. One side of the stadium, the orange is still sitting there, savoring this moment and this victory. The crimson side starting to file out. And uh, we talked to Davo. He said, you know, I've been selling to my team ever since I've been the head coach. We have five goals every year. <laughs> win our opener, win our division, win the state, win our league, and then win our bowl game. And if we ever do all five in the same year, we're playing for the whole thing. And then he said they changed the rules yeah. on me. Now i got to add another one. Yeah, we got a chance to play for the whole thing. <laughs> we did it all. And we got a chance to play for the whole thing. He said when I, he was part of an Alabama national championship when they were 13 and 0. He said we were holding the trophy at 13 and 0 this year. We're just getting to the table. Well, they're about ready to take the table by storm here in Miami Gardens. Aerial coverage today brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, and I'm sure all of you that are watching do, you got to get Direct TV. Going to be one more feather in the cap. Of one Dabo Sweeney. In his seventh full year, this is going to be his 75th win as a head coach of the Clemson Tigers. And through 100 games coming in, he had the exact same winning percentage as Danny Ford, who was the coach that won the 81 title. Dabo's going to have a chance at 14 and 0. He'll take his troops to Arizona. Deshaun could run for president in South Carolina right now or governor. Well, what a brilliant job by Brent Venables and the defensive staff also one dimensionalizing this in explosive Oklahoma offense tonight, holding them to 67 yards rushing. Another knee after a hesitation by Deshaun. Deshaun Watson. Wayne Gallman, the offensive line of the Tigers, a better than expected defense by the Tigers, and a Tiger team that still got just 1-0 over there in the lost column. Deshaun Watson's trying to get instruction from the sideline. What do we want me to do here? Because the play clock's off from the game clock. Going to take it all the way down and then take a timeout. Time out. Their final one. Their third and final timeout. So be a 30 second timeout. If you didn't think that Clemson earned their way through their season, this will be their fifth win over a team that has at least 10 victories this season. And it's really hard to never have a blemish on your record and they still don't. Well their pizza party when they won the ACC championship is going to turn into an orange juice party here in a second. Six seconds left. They'll run it around Oklahoma. Won't do anything. Deshaun's going to throw it in the stands or as far as he can throw it into the Clemson stands. And it's over. The Clemson Tigers are the Capital One Orange Bowl champions. They are still undefeated. They are 14 and 0. And they've got a date with either Michigan State or Alabama for a national crown. Holly's with a winning coach. Well, Dabba, what does 14-0 sound like to you? 
It sounds like it's been seven years. And uh, it's been a fun journey. God is good. So, all the glory to God. That's all I can say. It's been unbelievable. Been a long time. Never been on a 14 no team. So it sounds good. But, you know, our team has, has shown heart and guts all year long. And it's amazing to me that, you know, I told them, hey, we ain't favored to win the damn game, but we ain't no underdog. You know, and all that, everybody out there, nobody believes in this team except these guys. And they just got a great heart. And it showed tonight. I thought we physically won in the trenches. That's what this game's all about. It's just beating the guy in front of you. And we, we, we got off to a, a good start. We just were scoring in the red zone. We got that fixed in the second half. Defense rose up in the second half. Man, what are some huge plays. BJ, Ben Boware. All I know is we go into the netty. That's all I know. We're going to play somebody in Arizona. And God is good. And to, to God be the glory. That's all I got to say. I am going to ask you one more, though. You went into the locker room down at the half, Coach, but you came right back out and scored. What did you say in the locker room at halftime that got your team right? Well, we just got to clean a few things up. You know, we, we, we had like five drives in a row into the red zone, and, and we, we weren't getting touchdowns. So uh, we just need to clean a few things up. I was really disappointed that we didn't make a couple of the competitive plays. So we made those competitive plays. Uh, just a tremendous second half. But, you know, the thing for us is, Anytime we take it, we're 51 and 0 when we take a lead in the fourth quarter. So I said, let's go win the third quarter because we know what happens in the fourth quarter. And that's exactly when it went. Hey, Sean Watson coming in to give his coach a big hug right here. We'll hear from Deshaun in just a few moments. Bradley. All right, Holly, thanks. Well, God is good, that's for sure. But Deshaun Watson's better than good. He's pretty good, too. And he started out as a runner. You know, the quarterback run. Oklahoma knew it was coming. They knew it was a big part of the Clemson attack. But just because you know it doesn't mean you can stop it. And they have a lot of different ways they do it. Counter, power, quarterback draw. And then he also can throw the football. They got him out of the pocket. This was a huge play on the touchdown to Renfro. Really kind of turned this game upside down for Clemson in the second half. And the comparison between the two quarterbacks, even though good numbers for Baker Mayfield and another 300 yard passing, two interceptions. First time he's done that since the Tennessee game in week two. But Tonight, the Sooners just couldn't run the football, and the Tigers could, and there's a difference. Yeah, it's absolutely the difference. The score of the game was 37-17, to 17, but the real number was 312 yards rushing for Clemson, only 67 yards rushing for Oklahoma. If you outrush somebody that much, if it's that one-sided in a game like this where both teams want to establish balance, it's got to go the way that it did. You know, that Clemson in the second half, they just didn't give the ball back to Oklahoma. Oklahoma couldn't sustain any drives. Tigers had the ball for 20 minutes and yeah. 20 and a half minutes in the second half. Yeah, they wore him down. They ran the ball, as Dabo said. They won it in the trenches, and I thought their defensive line, even without Shaq Lawson for the majority of the game, he was out early in the game, they were still able to control things on the other side as well. You know, Dabo, even with Holly in the post-game interview, said nobody believes in this team except these guys on this team. I don't buy that anymore. I don't either. Because I think the whole country knows how good they were, whether they were an underdog or not tonight. It really didn't matter because they went out and did what they did to 13 other opponents all season long. And at 14-0, I don't know who argues with them right now. Regardless of who they play, Michigan State or Alabama, will they be favored in that one? I don't know, but they got a chance to be perfect, and nobody's ever done that, at least with 15 wins. Deshaun Watson leads the way. He's probably going to be holding the MVP trophy here in a couple of minutes. But now Clemson going back to last season has won 17 straight football games. You know, he made the comment that Oklahoma's defense has been much improved this year, but they hadn't faced a quarterback like, like Deshaun Watson. Now, if they would have played Trevon Boykin and TCU, he's the most similar guy in their league to Deshaun Watson, but Boykin was hurt. And just the run pass ability of Watson, plus Wayne Gallman, I think, you know, the, the wow. Oklahoma coaches said he's the most underrated player on their team. He is really good. You know, he's not as big, and he's not in the NFL, but Deshaun Watson, since high school, has had a relationship with Cam Newton. 
And when you look at him, he's not as big, but he's got a little cam in him. And one might play in the state of South Carolina, one might play in the state of North Carolina. But you watch this kid play, and you just marvel at what he might become. He's already really, really yeah. good. And you think about Clemson going from here, whoever they face, Michigan State or Alabama, both outstanding defensive teams, but both teams that if you have a quarterback run game, that really makes you account for something different and is a real challenge even for defenses as good as Alabama and Michigan State. The 82nd Capital One Orange Bowl, Clemson. This is going to even them off in Orange Bowls. They're three and three now. I don't think they care too much about that, but the, the old older folks like me do because they won the Orange Bowl in 81 to beat Nebraska for the national championship. Tonight, they win the Orange Bowl for a chance to play for the national championship. What a scene. The seniors on this team have a remarkable record. I believe they're 46 and 7 with this win tonight. So that shows you the job that Davos Sweetie has done with his 75th win. Not only the ACC Coach of the Year, the National Coach of the Year. And now they got the championship belts, at least for the Orange Bowl. One more belt they want to win. They got one more bout they got to win. I don't know if there's anybody that has more phrases or sayings than Dabo Sweeney, <laughs> but that was a good one right there. One, but not done. That's right. As we said, five goals has become five goals plus one. See Dan Radakovich, the athletic director behind the Sean. Getting everybody lined up down there so Holly and the Orange Bowl committee can go Hancocks down there. A lot of pictures going on already. Celebrating going on already. Quite a performance by Coach Sweeney's Clemson Tigers as we head down to Holly Rowe. Well, thank you, and what a wonderful evening here in Miami. We'd like to have a special thank you. We are so grateful to Capital One for their support of college football. And now to present the Capital One Orange Bowl trophy, the president and chair of the Orange Bowl Committee, Lee Stapleton. Thanks, Holly. On behalf of the Orange Bowl, we'd like to congratulate both of the teams, the Capital One Orange Bowl and the College Football Playoff. I'm so happy to present you with this trophy on behalf of Capital One Orange Bowl. Coach Stabo, you said this team brought their own guts when you brought them to all this glory. Congratulations. Thank you. How about the Tigers, baby? Thank you, Lee. I just want to say thank you to the Orange Bowl, Capital One. It was an incredible week. So proud of our team and our staff for the preparation, how they played the game. It was an awesome second half. It's been 34 years since Clemson played for the national championship, but it ain't going to be much longer. Brad, let's go back to you. All right, Holly, thank you. So it's 14-0 for the Clemson Tigers as they are still perfect and they'll play for a national crown in Glendale, Arizona.